everybody. How are you doing today? Today, I'm so excited to be showing you how you can paint this stargazer, this girl reaching for the stars in this incredible galactic sky. This is the final day of Space Week, and I've loved sharing this with you. I'm Cinnamon Cooney. I'm your Art Sherpa, and today is a live broadcast in the middle of a storm. <laughs> On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. Um, he's going to be following me around with the cameras, trying to zoom in so you can see all the action, trying to keep you like you're right here in the studio with me so you can see how I'm painting it. Most importantly, so you can paint this at home. That's what my whole thing is about is that you guys paint this at home. And before we get going, I just wanted to say this is definitely three hoot. <laughs> it is going to be three hoot, but if you've been waiting to try three hoot, I think this is the one. You know, and definitely still watch this because you're going to learn a lot about how uh, more complicated paintings layer up. But this is still for beginners, more more an advanced beginner kind of lesson. Yeah. How you doing today, babe? Pretty good. Let's talk about the painting. The painting. Okay. All right. So this painting, when I designed this, this was actually to celebrate our 200K. Mm -hmm. And I initially created this design. I didn't even have a plan. It was just a live event. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to doodle with paint. And I did that. And then... I took that doodle, right? So mm -hmm. that was a previous video, the 200K. And then I was like, what can I do? How can I capture how I'm feeling? How can I do this? Of course, I used my daughter, honey, as <laughs> my... She, how often is she my muse, right? So this is my daughter, and she's reaching for the stars. And I wanted a sky that felt like all the possibilities. So I utilized a very warm and cool color play with a play between contrast to create a huge amount of intense, whimsical drama in the sky. And then I decided that it'd be really amazing to have some sort of lit mountains, snow-capped mountains in the background, and then have those reflected in the lake hmm. to give it that sense of mystery and mysteriousness, creating reflections back here. The pier leading into the canvas, leading into the girl, right, reaching up for the star, so that we create this sort of like swirling center of interest. And I did her, I did her in red, I did her, we tried all kinds of colors. This was painted a bunch of times. And I finally, you know, I just really liked Honey in the little white dress and the front grasses and the sort of really beat up dock. And this dock I decided to do the planks horizontally so I could show you guys kind of how that perspective was done. That is the thinking behind this painting. That is what I'm gonna be showing you how to create today. Let's look at our materials. Cool. Our materials, we're still on the air, I'm so surprised. Our materials <laughs> are 9 by 12 canvas board. I'm doing a smaller canvas today simply because this is an involved painting and you, you guys might want to go home at some point. I've got my acrylic paint out here. The materials are listed in the description below, but I want to go over a couple things about them. Okay. I have some alizarin crimson hue. If you have this particular sample, this will work. If this is just sitting over in your kit and you're like, what can I do with this? This will absolutely paint into all these other paints. So either alizarin crimson or this. If you don't have this crimson, just get any cool crimson. Whoa. I'm playing with both Prussian blue and phthalo blue today. I don't intend to be using a ton of this, so if you don't have it, you can still do the painting. Both burnt umber and burnt sienna. If you really didn't have both, you could still work just your burnt sienna or burnt umber. Dogs eating purple, phthalo green, Indian yellow, cad yellow, quinacridone magenta, yellow ochre, titanium white, and definitely soft-bodied black, soft-bodied white. You could just use black paint if you didn't have that, and I've got some black paint here. And of course, my gloss glazing liquid. This is the two styles of bottles you might see this in. This is not the same as glazing liquid that you see in other products. This is a this slows the drying time on my paint and allows me to glaze, and I think is one of those tools that's so fantastic to have for landscape painting. Mm. Oh, that was fun. That's a lot to go over. Lots to go over, right? So I need to start putting out some of these colors that I have in my sky. So I'm going to put my picture here real fast. Oh, and I want to add a wish to my canvas. Oh, yes. Because, and just one today, which is going to be that all people going through the storm are safe. Yes. And dry and that no one gets hurt. That's my wish for this storm. That's a great one. There's a lot of people echoing that wish in there. I, I, I feel like we got to get that energy into the universe today. 
So I've got our picture in picture there for you. Yes, we've got picture in picture. I'm putting out my Diox purple. And I'm going to put out some Thelo Blue, polyethicane blue, green shade. Um, you really only see the shades if you're getting um, pro paint. You won't see that in student paint. All Thelo Blue in student paint is green shade. You only see the red and blue shades in the pro paints. Because it's a lot more expensive to make those different colors. Right. I'm going to add some quinacridone magenta. Choo, 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 choo. Which I just dearly, dearly love. Dearly, dearly love. The alizarin crimson actually is for her skin tone. So oh, if you have another that. skin tone recipe that you like, you can exchange that out as well. And I have a whole video on different skin tones. Mm. Isn't this pretty? Just that even is. laying I just it like out. That. I, just like, I was just actually noticing that. I was like, I like that color arrangement. That so just looks really nice. It's, it is. It's really lovely. Now, Indian, the Indian yellow, mm -hmm. that could be Australian sienna. That could be any warm orangey yellow. And this cad yellow could be exchanged with Hansa or any kind of yellow medium or deep. Kind of right cool. here. So that's where you're at with that. I'm going to put out some white to lighten. I'm, I normally would do a zinc white in a landscape, but I didn't in this one because I just ended up not needing it. And let's see if I've, I have managed to figure out how to plug every single cap and jar and everything in my studio. <laughs> it's not me until I figure out how to clog it all up. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is kind of lay out my horizon line. And I'm going to use this painting from before to help me make sure that I'm similar with my T-square. And then I'll tell you the exact measurement from the top it is so you can join me. And I'm just going to do that in graphite because it's okay. So this from the top is going to be five and, what is this, seven, the three, do you remember what this is, three quarters? Uh, I can, oh, I'm trying to see from here. It looks like, yeah, that's three quarters. Okay, I'm just terrible at this. <laughs> you know what's easier? It's 14 and a half centimeters. <laughs> Europeans, it's your day. 14 and a half centimeters is my horizon line. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Just switch to European sensible style of measurement when it all goes wrong. So I'm going to start blocking in my background. How very, how very European of you. Hmm? How very European of you. How very European of to me. To use the metric system. To use the metric system. So I'm going to grab a number 10 bright. This is ruby satin. This is synthetic filaments. It's very firm, won't hold too much water. And I'm going to start laying in my darker colors first. I think it was from all that time you spent in Canada. <laughs> So I'm going to grab a little of my alizarin over into my diox. I may include some glazing medium just so that I have a little, a little blend. It's very, for a storm coming, it's super dry in my studio today. Oh, maybe we can pull over. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're okay. You're fine. I just have to adjust up a little bit. You're fine. So when I'm putting this in, this first layer in, I'm going to be more concerned with getting these values and shapes. So I'm going to come down the side a little bit, tapering off. You can see I'm just back and forth on the feather. I'm not pressing this brush in very hard, am I? I'm just on the edge of those bristles. All right, I'm going to come here and get a little more of this. I will be doing layers in the sky. One of the areas that we see is there's this kind of deep area that comes down the center, and I'm going to want to make sure I lay that in diagonally. At this stage, I'll overpaint my dark, which means I'm going to take my dark value further than I'm going to actually need it um, so that when I come back with my light, I can get those beautiful nebulae shapes. So I'm just the quinacridone and a little diox, right? Mm -hmm. Again, overpainting my value. And there'll be some layers here. Yeah. This sky, it's a composition. But this is the first part. This is that first value that I've got to find. I'm going to then get just right into my quinacridone. I've just wiped off my brush, not dried it. You can see the load on both sides. And I'm going to come here and just start blending these two edges. Quinacridone. Blending them. 
right? The nice thing about the quinacridone is even if my purple has dried, the quinacridone is fairly transparent. So it will glaze over the color underneath it without too much difficulty. Now at this point, I will go ahead and rinse out my brush. You know, I press right down to the bottom and I get that paint kind of nice and out. Notice I've, th oh, I love that ting, 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 <laughs> ting, ting, ting. <laughs> I'm going to take a little of my Indian yellow, right, over to my quinacridone and get a beautiful, warm, exciting kind of orange here. You see that? Yeah. Just the edge of my bristles. And again, going to be blending over it. Where it's not wet into wet, where I can't wet into wet work it, that's no problem because it's a glaze, because it's transparent. Gotcha. Knowing that you can always find out on a tube of paint, look at the little lines. If you have golden, you can see it's through. Look somewhere in the paint, it'll tell you how transparent, what its tinting strength is, somewhere on the tube, on most good brands of paint. All right, most good brands of paint. Now, I'm going to come here and add a little, woo, CAD, a smidge. A smidge. A smidge to this whole mixture and a little white. And I want it to be a yellow. I might add some more Indian yellow to this. Right, before I go into the bottom, because this is very bright. Right, graying over this. Now we might have to pull that up. I'm way into where my mountains are, right? I've painted below where my mountains are going to be. A little more Indian yellow, a little more white. Right here, towards the center. There we go. Fun, fun stuff. Now, when I'm working a painting and I'm trying to make decisions about how I put a painting together, I have two paths. Do you remember those books where you could choose your own adventure? In art, I'm always kind of in a choose your own adventure experience. So at this stage, what I can do is dry my sky and finish this whole upper part of my composition completely, oh, excuse me, before adding, <laughs> so sorry, before adding the lower part of yep. my composition. In this case, though, right, mm -hmm. I can also block in the lower part yeah. and allow it to dry while this upper area is drying. And by doing that, I can shorten the amount of time it takes me to produce a painting. A lot of times I get asked, how are you so fast? Yeah. Not fast at explaining anything, but I am fast at painting. <laughs> and one of the ways that I'm fast at painting is when I work in my own private studio, when I'm working on my own, man, I am working on parts of the painting I know are going to be completed in the future and letting other parts dry. I don't yeah. get caught in one kind of pigeonhole in my painting. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Cool. I'm going to rinse out my brush all the way shot. of yellow. If you have another brush that's a 10, it's a good time to switch it out. What you don't want is to create um, graying colors by having dirty water or a lot of pigment on your brush. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to start with what's going to be happening in the reflection coming down, just the beginning ah. of it. So I'm going to take, interestingly enough, a little of my purple and my phthalo. I want this quite dark, right? And I'm going to start by coming underneath here, making my horizon line. We will come in and make this even darker. And I'm going to try to keep this as level as possible. And then back and forth, just starting to think about the underpainting of all of this. And I'm going to actually do a weird trick where I come back with white for this bright reflection in the center where I need it to be high yellow. Mm. Because I want these long, fluid, uninterrupted brush strokes. Now I'm going to come here with my pink 
and purple. Again, we're building an understory that we're going to be talking about later, and it looks like I'm going to need some more quinacridone. This is that understory. The understory matters. Am I going to draw a pier over this? Yes. Am I going to put a girl over this? Yes. But my understory is part of my composition, and I never want to lose it completely. So I'm adding a little of my purple and blue mixture to the edge bristles of my brush, coming in, putting it in here, and then just, you can see where it's wet into wet, mm -hmm. I get a nice blend. I'm on the edge of my bristles, and it's real soft. Can you see how it does that? Yeah. I'm going to go back and get another nice blend. See that nice blend? So that's how I'm going to get that as I'm coming down for an understory. And I work real fast. The reason I work fast, again, I'll show you slow, woo, is because the paint dries on me, and that's what I'm fighting is time. I'm uh -huh. like the Prince of Persia here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did that. <laughs> it's been known to happen. Has anybody, like, ever do doubted my dorkiness? <laughs> I hope not because it's real genuine. Okay. So I'm going to take this thalo blue and this thalo green. I'm going to mix them together, right, and make a thalo turquoise. And I'm going to make sure that I can really see that thalo turquoise by adding a smidge of white to it. And here we go, some glazing medium. And I'm going to come right here. Now, what's wonderful about the quinacridone that other reds won't probably do as well is that this quadacridone magenta blends fairly well with this turquoise. Mm -hmm. Actually, even with phthalo green, it's crazy. That's all about the color theory. And I have a whole quest on that. But we'll look at that even more as we go forward. Maybe I'm just back here, I'm going, I'm soft. See how soft I'm barely touching the canvas? Yeah. And this creates, I'm going to go slow again. Just barely touching that canvas. Look what's happening right there. Tells quite an interesting story, doesn't it? Yeah. And you can see how the, my bristles are just kissing. Just barely having a minute. Oh! The brush jumped out of your hands. Brush down. <laughs> brush down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little clumsy. <laughs> I'm a little clumsy. That happens. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> All right. So I'm putting this in here. And you can kind of see. Now you understand what I'm doing. How I'm doing it. Why this with the brush. See? Just, see, just going across. Just if I was painting with too soft of a brush, like, it would just be so ineffective. Now, th you're keeping all these brush strokes horizontal here. All these. You can see that they're, these are all horizontal, and these have started to take on some of the aspects of the sky, right? Now, I'm going to put this down. Sip my coffee. Sip your coffee. My coffee. Well, and then dry my painting. And John's going to say hi to you guys and look for some questions and see how y'all are doing. I have a question. Mm. Uh, so uh, Brenda was just asking, uh, she, she always is missing a color or two. And uh, and this one's it's the blues and magentas. Uh, yeah. Cause, you know, what can she use instead? So here's a little trick about painting. This is the secret behind all painting. You can pretty much um, use any color you like if you understand the value. Right, which the value is the grayscale, how light or dark something's value is, mm -hmm. lets you really mess with the hue. That's the color that you're using, right? So, I mean, color theory is incredible. And when we're doing certain atmospheric paintings, it becomes very important to maybe use certain warm colors. Like if you think of the artist Turner, he was so experimental and he created... Some of the most exciting paintings, paintings of his day because he did use particular colors. Like Indian yellow was like his jam. Yeah. Right? And he wasn't really particularly concerned about color permanence or any of that. He was just about the result, that moment, that freshness. However, if you look at him, the guy had his values down. 
Yeah. His gray scale was on point. So when he's out there standing there in a storm with an umbrella over his head, painting in the pouring rain, trying to capture this moment, he also was really good at evaluating in this purple hue and this yellow hue, which one was darker, which one was lighter. And then he can make some very exciting decisions. What that means for you as a new artist is print out my pictures in black and white. Hmm. Then you can see, is this dark, is this light? And maybe you don't have all the blues I have, but if you get how light and how dark something is, you're still going to get a great painting, even if you don't have exactly my exact color. And I'm going to get some results from Indian Yellow. It's why I use it. And maybe you only have CAD today. But if you really nail the value, you're going to nail the painting at the end of the day. It's why, like, you see, like, amazing plein air painters like Rick Negolero. Mm -hmm. He goes out. He doesn't have to have a huge palette. Guy has his values down. Yeah. Down in the woods with bugs <laughs> and snakes. And he's, I would be like, I couldn't think value. I'd be like running on a rock. I'd be screaming. I'd be like, it's so pretty, but deadly. <laughs> Just let my painting dry. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that's a good answer for you guys. Yeah. No, I think that, that that's great. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So you, do, you, do you think it's dry enough? You think no, okay? I have to dry it with hair dryer. Just dry it. Okay. I will try. <laughs> While she's drying that, I will say hello to everybody. And thank you for coming today. We've got like three. Just under 300 people here today, and this has been really, really nice. You know, I always love seeing and having you guys out here. And I know a lot of people have been enjoying the morning shows. We enjoy those too. So, it's uh, as long as you guys keep uh, keep enjoying those, we'll, we'll we'll keep trying to do more of them. Don't forget to go and check out uh, everything going on, on our website, where you can find the calendar, list of events that are coming up, our next pro uh, our next big uh, event, which is going to be Southwest Week, and that's coming up. And then uh, I think after that is the thir day, 13 days of Halloween uh, leading into the fall schedule. So all that's going to be available up on the website. You can find out more there. There's a chat up there where you can hang out. And of course, please, please, please share up all of your, uh, uh, your, your pictures up there. And you know, this is the last day of Space Week. Oh, you turned it back up. Yes. Oh, sorry. There you what? go. Last, year. Last day of Space Week, but that means that there is literally six other space paintings for you to do. That's right. The boat painting tomorrow, mm -hmm. maybe rescheduled or uploaded or some yeah, other thing we're based see on the, the storm. storm. You're going to get that boat, though, because yeah. I'm the Sherpa, and I keep my art promises, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, I think eventually. is the better word. <laughs> you do. Eventually. <laughs> so this little bad boy is a Cambridge Bright number six, right? Mm -hmm. And it's with natural um, hog bristles, right? Yeah. Mixed with a synthetic. It's a very scruffly, scrumbly little brush. If you are if you can't get a mix and you're painting with just a hog, right? Which mm -hmm. you can get these very inexpensive. Um, remember that they soften when they're wet. So a lot of times you need to have several of them so you always have a dry one ready to go. Because once they get in the water, they start to get mushy. All right, let's get a little of our magenta in our docks again, like we like, All right? Yes. And we're going to come up here, and I'm going to be, look, I'm just going to be going back and forth. Can you see how I'm doing this? Yeah, let me give you zoom in on there. Okay. You're I'm going to really show this. Okay. Ho hopefully. I feel silly, but I'm going to show it. So I'm going to be going back. See so how I press the brush in? Yeah. All right? You can see how it's flared out. And I'm going to be going back and forth. Sometimes I'm going to lighten it up. See, I'm going back and forth light. Yeah. But what I'm trying to do is create non-specific patterns. You're making 80s feathered hair. Yeah, I'm making 80s feathered hair. I just grab some more magenta. So you can see me back, 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 back. Press in. Go light. And I'm going to be altering that. That's going to press out all those little dots or exposed spots on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be giving myself some values. Look, but I'm not going to get all of it. Notice how some of it's left light? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to create that sort of sky spacey effect. And then coming down here. We just never, ever stop. Okay. 
Now I'm going to go with my blue and my purple. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just come down the middle. And that's what I'm doing, what I showed you earlier. I'm like this, right? Yeah. And then feather, 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 feather. Push, 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 push. Feather, 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 feather. Push, push, push. And this brush is helpful for that. I can do that without hurting this brush. So I'm just making sure that this is. That's what we're doing. Does that help everybody? Oh, yeah. That's, okay. I think they really like that, being zoomed in like that. Yeah. And then off, light, 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 light. You can just see that. I'm just back and forth like that. And then I'm just going to move it around, leaving some spots not as painted as others. So it's kind of a dry brush. It's definitely a cousin of a scumble. I can also move the brush over to the flat of the bristles and go like this, see? Back and forth, back and forth. Loading up. Going to be very light over here because I want a lot of my purple glaze to be showing through. Right? So see how that's showing through? Down here. Take it down. Do, 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 do. Just taking this whole aspect down. There we go. Pushing it back, pushing it over to the left. Pushing it over to the right, pushing it over to the left and the right. Yes, this is below my mountain line, right? But my sky would be, and I'm just pressing out all the little white that could be showing on my canvas board. And so now if you decided to change your mind on where that mountain was. Yeah, I'm you're, good. You're okay. I'm so good. All right, I'm going to rinse this poor baby out. So abused, so abused. And I'm going to get another one in fresh water because I want this next bit to be fairly light. So let's see. Uh, this is might be a slightly bigger brush, but that's just because I think I, I have a four. I could use the four, but I think I'm going to use this uh, eight. All right. So I'm going to get this eight out, and I'm going to kind of do some things at the base before I start putting in the clouds. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, you're on camera. Oh, it's so exciting. So here I am. I'm going to get this brush wet and drag it off. If you have just like, say you grabbed an inexpensive uh, hog bristle brush from somewhere, you may want to skip the part where you get it wet, right? I'm going to dry out the extra water from this. And I'm going to come just get even my just my awesome little Indian yellow here loaded up. And I'm going to be doing the same thing, pushing back and forth into these spaces. See how where they glaze over, it grays out? This creates important stuff here. I'm going to just dash out here, just back and forth, back and forth, push up, back and forth, push up, back and forth, push up. Sounds like a workout, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I come to this part of the sky, I will sweep up and back, uh, down and up, down and up, right? Come get a little of my magenta. Look at that. Now I'm sweeping back, right? I can come in and do my little back and forth. So between the sweep up and down and the back and forth, I'm creating some very random, look at that, mm -hmm. atmospheric shapes. Push, 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 push. That's just wiggling back and forth and pushing forward. So Sierra was curious, why did you choose this brush over a cloud brush for this? Oh, I'm getting in my clouds in a second. 
So, but, but why are you using this one instead of a cloud brush? Well, I wouldn't do my whole sky with my clouds. I do specific types of scumbles with those clouds. They're rounded. Mm -hmm. So what's wonderful about these is that they're rounded. Yeah. So I can press an impresto, kind of round space down. I can scumble in a very precision way. And I can get control of my dry brushing in kind of an exciting way. But it doesn't brush like what you were just doing. It doesn't. It. It. I mean, like I probably could push through. Like if you're if you're looking through that, I can show you. Like if I had my clouds here, I'd go like this, and then I could be. But you can see it's smaller, and it does kind of a different scumbly thing. And when we bring this into play, right? See how it scumble is even different. Yeah. This is different, different baby, and this does all kinds of important drab brushy little bits. Right. But I, I think the biggest size I have the sucker in is an eight. Gotcha. So <laughs> sometimes I got to switch to a bigger brush and also just to get the big fields. Yeah. And put out some more magenta. So like I told you, we're painting for a minute. Hopefully that's OK today. Yeah. Hopefully we're all good with that. Where did my misters go? I do not know. I had misters. I'll look. I see one underneath, but I don't want to reach for it. I'll get it. One on my desk. So that's what's going on. A lot of times I'm looking at the amount. When I paint a very big painting, as much as I love my clouds, if I had a big giant painting, I probably wouldn't even get into them unless there was some real precision work I needed to do. I'm misting my palette because I have it on a palette paper and it's drying out and I want to have a minute to work with it. That's gotcha. what's happening. All right. So I'm going to come and get a little of my purple into this red, but more strongly red. Right? And look what I'm doing here. I'm just going to blend this here, creating these big fields, this big thought of everything. Thought, 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 thought. Press, press, press. See? Press, press, press. Yeah. This creates this sort of unexpected. Look, I can even go like this. So what I'm doing is I'm managing to make my space less expected. Rinsing out. When you're trying to keep a painting bright, change that water often. John just helped me out there. And it's a big deal. Changing that water often makes a huge deal in the outcome of your painting when you're painting very bright paintings. So I'm right here, and I'm going to be just working that same, same thing, right? I might even get a little white into this whole space to get some coverage. So now we're working those values. Some just pink here. Added some white to my pink. Look at that. Look how bright oh, yeah. that pink is now against this space. This bright pink against the turquoise is going to play. That's color. That's the color. You got to love it. So just brushing this, you can see I'm just back and forth very softly. And in a second, I'm going to have to dry all this again to start working my uh, cloud space in. That's okay. I'm going to put some over here because I just think that would be exciting. So put some over here. Some exciting pink in the sky. Yeah, just, you know, any time that you can s recognize and see that you need to um, get some value going, it's always, always a good idea. Now, I'm going to do a weird thing right here. I'm going to want to make sure that I'm hand dotting my stars down the center here a little bit. Oh, yeah, to create a nice constellation so look. I'm going to do my first layer of splatter before I have to dry anyways. Oh. So this is my fluid paint. Craft paint is like this. If you thin, so here's the thing on splatters, right? If you thin with water, that's when you're more likely to get that sort of s stringy splatter, right? So if you're thinning your heavy body paint with water, please test your splatter, whatever you're using to splatter, on construction paper or some other paper before you test it on your canvas. Because if you miss splatter on your canvas, you got to dry it and then paint the whole thing, like the sky back over it and re-splatter. Right. The other way you can put out stars is very slowly, one little dot at a time. That's also acceptable. And there's a bunch of artists that do that because they don't like the out-of-control feeling that they get from splatter. Right. 
and you can't be wrong as an artist. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to angle my splatter sort of up the canvas in this way, and then up the canvas in this way. This is one of my galaxy brushes, and I'm going to very gently pull back. If you want some more information about star splatter, I have a whole video about it. But this gives me my first layer of far away dispersion that I'm going to need. Right? And you can see it gets down here, but that's okay. I'm going to be doing a whole lake down here, so I don't really got to be worried about it. And it's all right if a couple stars reflect in your water. Right. So I'm going to rinse that out and dry that off because we don't want to leave that in the water. And I'm going to dry this while John chats with you. Okay. Hello. Wow. This is looking really cool. I love when, uh, I just love watching the star, the, you know, the galaxy paintings get done. So I'm a fan of watching her too. So thank you guys for coming and hanging out. I like to see you guys. Don't forget to share your galaxy paintings. These are some of my favorite, favorite. That's why Cinnamon did a whole week of these for me. And uh, I know that a lot of you guys have enjoyed these too. So thank you for spending this week with us and doing the eclipses and sharing your stories about those there are a lot of great pictures of people who, uh, who who saw the the crescents forming in the in the leaves on the tr or the uh, shadows on the ground from from through trees uh, the camera obscuras and uh, got to see lots of people reacting to the uh, to the eclipse and that was that was really fun so thank you guys for sharing all of that and thank you for sharing your pictures I look forward to seeing more of those don't forget to come out and hang out on our website um, where you can check out our next upcoming event, which will be Southwest Week. Um, and I think that's, uh, yeah, we'll, ha we'll have all of those dates. I think it's ten sixteen coming up here. Not sure. I've got some notes here, but they're scattered. When does Space Week start? Or no, <laughs> what was Space Week? When does Southwest Week start? The 10th of September? 10th of September. 10th of the 16th? 10th to the 16th. There, that makes more sense than 10 16. Southwest week! It's the 10th Gosh, to the 16th. I hope somebody likes Southwest art because we're doing it for a week. Yep, that's what it is. It's, it's the 10th through the 16th, not 10 16. All there right. We go. <laughs> so now I've got to start putting some of these exciting cloud colors and everything up here, and it's really fun for me, and there's lots of layers to do, and I'm super excited about that. And I am going to be getting into my sweet, fluffy little cloud brushes. So, scumble brushes. When you're using glazing medium, you really need to make sure that your canvas is fully dry and not sticky because all scumble brushes, stenciling brushes, won't really function well dry brushing over slightly sticky paint. Mm. So that's why I took that time to dry it and was touching the water down here where it's okay if it's smeared or it did something since I'm painting over all of this. But this is starting to come to a resolution and I didn't want to damage it up here. Ah. All right, so let's start into our turquoise. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and phthalo green, mixing them together. And I'll start pushing in maybe some dark clouds up here with this aspect. And I think I want this more in the green. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to be, and how this is, I kind of just, move this lightly. I'm not pressing super hard. If you press hard, I'm going to leave a lot of paint. I'm moving just lightly over my surface. And I'm going to like do strokes where I go back and forth. Maybe I go in little circles. You can see some of the stars are shining through. And I'm working some of this green into the space. And each time I do a sky, I want to think about these layers, what I'm seeing underneath. I want to keep the stuff that I feels be feel is beautiful. In painting, there's something that happens in the canvas. We call them passages. These are bits of imagery or sections or like a phrase of poetry that you find appealing. One of the biggest things that I struggle with, all artists struggle with, is keeping the brilliant passages and recognizing when something is just a bunch of self-indulgent drivel. And it's between those two things. So what I'm going to be paying attention to is what little color patterns and events I have organically created here that I think are super lovely and not to completely get rid of them. The other thing I've got to be thinking about is that clouds, right? Mm -hmm. They're a lot in the shadow, aren't they? Just back and forth. Let's be random. Let's be light. Let's just, you know, 
be like stars. Now to pick up the color on this, I'm going to add a little white to my brush. See a little bit of the white here? Yeah. And I'm going to come in over my dark colors and start to add a bit of soft, light value. And you can see I'm just back, forth, back, forth, or circle. I am literally just using this round brush that's super scratchy to randomize this space for me. I'm going to take this up here, and I, but I don't want to lose some of this passage. And so that's what I'm trying to pay attention to is what do I have here? that I think is great. I want a forward facing highlight here. So I'm gonna just make sure I keep some of that there. Where I find my bristles are sticking, it's because the paint is sticky. Ah. And you may need to go back and dry again. If you're, if you're fighting your brush, that's about as the paint dry. Now I'm gonna start maybe coming along what is this part of the Milky Way and creating that light aspect along this passage. Look, I brought some in. I also twirl my brush. See how all the brush has different little bits of paint on it? Yeah. I'll twirl, catching different values and experiences on the brush that I can play with. Coming back here, just lightly circular motion. Circular motion. If you're painting with, if you're doing the bristles, you're just continuing to do what I showed you with your bristles. Right? Yeah. So I'm going to come in and get a little more blue, a little phthalo green, wiping that all out, and maybe a little more white this time. And you see I have to offload my brush. If I have to, I wipe it out. I'm going to just make sure that I'm dusting. See, I'm going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, lightly. Oh, yeah. Dusting, barely touching. Back, forth, back, forth. Maybe there needs to be some forward-facing light on this gaseous little bit of awesomeness. Leaving this area of dark through here. A little bit back there, ah, but lighter up here because this is closer, right? This is further up the sky, so there'll be less highlights. It'll be darker, but I'll, I'll lightly imply one. Keep most of my drama down this way. All right, let's work over here a bit. So we're starting to see how that starts to come in. It's ex uh, Hopefully it's exciting. It is very exciting. It's exciting for me. You know, sometimes watching paint tutorials is literally like watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making a dark color, but a little bit lighter than what I had over here. And I'm going to come very softly, see, over the purple. And because the magenta is under here, and I know how the magenta works with the phthalo green and phthalo blue, I know that this magical sky is not going to gray out, but it's just going to come to life. It's a thing that I know. Look at that. If you're able to get the magenta and these colors, you're going to be really delighted at what they can do. What they can do. And I might come and get just a little green, just right on my brush. I don't want to take out all the purple here but I definitely want to deepen some of this cloud. See how I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Back into my blue. And this isn't the only space that I'm going to be using these colors, right? Mm -hmm. I'll be back into this mix in a minute because this guy is about layers. Gotcha. So let's definitely take some of this down here so we've got something to layer into. And I haven't even had to get into my small brushes yet. But again, this guy is an involved little piece of, kit, piece of kit. Let's get a little highlight going here. Just very carefully. Back and forth. Maybe in just a little dust circle. See? Dust, dust. This is, this is what I'm doing. See what I'm doing? Yeah. 
swish, 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 swish. Just doing that stroke right there. Swish, swish, swish. That makes the little cloud-like shapes. It's making little cloud-like shapes. I can go like this and make a different kind of cloud-like shape. Back and forth, right? Yeah. So I've got that happening there. It is a great time to take a step back. If you can, I can, and look at your painting <laughs> and see how it's going. I think it looks great. I, you know, sometimes when I see watercolors do this, and I do this as a watercolors too, and it, it's just crazy to me because in watercolor sky you go, dap, tap, 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 done. <laughs> it's all about the pre-planning, right? And then the execution goes so quick. But with acrylic, uh, you got to be in it to win it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys are up for this whole three hooter. Yes. Three who paintings, yay! All right, let's get some. Yeah, so that's that's that, that, and that's referring to our difficulty scale on a one right. and two, on a on a on a one to three difficulty. Right. So if you just came in, how hard is this painting to do if you're a new painter? If you're brand new and you haven't painted since kindergarten, probably not your first painting. You're gonna want to check out our one hoot playlist or a very easy playlist or a thirty under thirty or my very favorite, me being awesome with Q-tips. <laughs> So any of those are great to just start out if you just if you're getting together with your friends and family and you haven't painted in a really long time and you're trying to figure out what and the paint goes on the brush those are your paint those are your totally your paintings. But if you've been painting with me for a little bit and you're ready to take on some challenge and cut your teeth on some really fun atmospheric techniques, this is the way to go cuz I'm going to be showing you a bunch of cool stuff. Okay, I'm going to get a my next size down brush my next size down brush which is a six and I'm going to start working some of my yellow. So the first thing I'm going to take is I'm going to come in with my Indian yellow and just a smidge of my white. I'm going to mist my palette again because it's skinning. <laughs> <sighs> Get a smidge of my white and load up here like you do and I'm wanting lighter than just the pure Indian yellow but not totally like light light yet. Uh, no, very clear instructions but still true. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to see how I'm going dash 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 dab 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 or it's a dab like this. See? Just light pressure, lots of paint showing through underneath. Alright. Maybe this little one here can come back into this layering over the green, right? That's interesting. Yeah. Let's be interesting. And I'm going to take some of this maybe back here. Just doing that. Painting underneath is dry, so it lets me do a lot. Let's me do a lot. I'm going to just kind of scumble around here, creating some atmosphere. See what I'm doing? Like this. In this little circle motion. Soft pressure. You can see how far the brush, like hard will flail it out like this. And you can see press paint into the canvas. This softer pressure will let me kind of just swirl it around and dance it on top. And all this brush is just designed for this purpose just designed a brush for this purpose. I've been very purposeful. <laughs> I'm going to come back with just some Indian yellow because I like to have some dark values. And I'm going to just dash, 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 dash. Just dark values because I'm going to have a highlighted edge on my clouds, right? And right. then I'm going to have a shadow value on my clouds. That's how they, they're not really here. I'm just sort of hallucinating this whole thing as you do, which is always lovely. A little more white into this mix. Come back and maybe play some with the other side. Let me play some over here. A little bit right here. See me just going around. Okay. 
fun stuff, right? Yeah. I'm now, just... if I have to, for my angle, I can either turn my hand or my canvas. You decide what is good for your physicality because we all have different stuff happening in our health and bodies. Just remember your canvas turns and your hand turns, but don't strain your neck or back. Ever. Yeah, I really like how that's all coming together there. I'm loading up some magenta just to be super playful. Yeah, I do too. I love doing these. They're just, seriously, this is like meditation. Mm. It's so healing. I'm just adding this dark value back here. I'm going push, 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 push. When it gets sticky and it fights my brush, that's when I just kind of switch to, if I can't do the full circle easily because the paint got sticky, right? And I'll know that because the little end bristles will get stuck in it. Then I just switch over to this little flick stroke. Gotcha. Canvas doesn't tell me what to do. <laughs> that's not what's happening today. I'm going to rinse out my brush because your paint can start to dry on your brush. That, cl that sky is looking, hmm? So that sky is looking amazing. It is. It is. And I'm just playing with it. And you should just play with it too. Today we are we are really really landscaping. We're talking about how all of this is this wonderful field of warm and cool. Right? I'm going to come here and just make sure I've got a nice run of this same round 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 round. And then the dash 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 transparent paint, wonderful space, enjoying all this, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe add a little dark there. And that's okay, so you can add a little darks. How do we do? How we do? Do, 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 do. Starting to be a thing, isn't it? It's looking really good. I love doing this. I so do. I'll rinse this out, dry it off, and let it have a little recovery moment. Well, I grab another number eight. Where's my other number eight? Mm. I don't know. Got six. I need another eight. Where did I eight? You have a box of them right behind you. Okay. Number. Oh, here it is. Number eight. <laughs> what is going on with me? See things with my eyes. So I'm going to make some more of my phthalo turquoise, more to the green. And I might even grab some Indian yellow to get into this mixture back here. It warms it up is what it does. It's going to get playful over here on the back side. So as we're moving away from our light source, things, you know, get darker, get deeper, cool down. It's an interesting thing. And so we're going to play with that. That's glazing medium there in the middle? That's glazing medium in the middle. Okay. And that slows down the drying time of my paint and allows me to glaze where I need to. So here I am. You can see me just doing these soft circles, barely touching the canvas. Look at that. Canvas is super dry, so my brush is just gliding over the surface, not really struggling as I'm coming down. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And I'm just paying attention to this directionality of everything. I'm thinking right here, I want to add some of this deep value because it just bugged me, and now I am. That's a thing that I do. I'm painting the whole painting. I'm going to come back over here, take a sip while you get there, babe. John worries that like I move around so much he doesn't <laughs> want to give you guys like ang like anxiety or nausea. I've been really that's part of, part of the reason why I've been quiet today is I've been really watching the camera. <laughs> really watching the camera. So I'm gonna just be pulling this down here. Pulling this down here. How are we doing? How is everybody doing? Are you really excited about this sky? It's the, just a special sky. It's a lot of layers, it's but a it lot is a of special layers special sky notice that I, I left a little kiss of that red there mm -hmm. I just really wanted it there and I'm like you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give that space up yet that's not happening and get a little of my phthalo blue and phthalo green and a smidge of white but this is quite darker see it's still quite dark and if you compare it to this it's just quite dark come back here and just one more little little bit of interesting atmosphere over the pink and things are not graying here's another thing I can do I can also do this look at this 
just sort of back and forth. It's very atmospheric. You can do that up here too. Back, back, forth, back, back, forth. Zigging up and down. And I'm going to get some white on my brush. And let's, I think that one's more green, so I'll add some yellow to it. Oh, there it is. See, I found it? Yeah. Some yellow to it. And let's do that little circle, circle, circle. Press, 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 press. Very light and airy, this. Finding this outer edge. Light it up. Looking to see, do I see an inner edge? Huh, what I'm looking for is like patterns. Do you ever look at wood for faces or clouds for shapes? What I look for in these random shapes is levels that I can start to pull out into highlights. Yeah. Right? And define more. Right there. That's what I'm looking for. And I might even add some of this right here. I am loving my life. A little bit right here back and forth. And you can take it a smidge up here. How enjoyable is this sky? That's really nice, yeah. Yeah, and we're about to just tie it all together. So I'm going to rinse this out. And now let's pop it. Pop it. I'm going to get my smallest scumble. If you were doing a bright, right, um, try to get down into about, see, comparable range. So this is, this is like my number two, number, number, this should be my number, I guess it's a number four. It's my number four, and this is a two bright. You yeah. can kind of see that in relationship to my badly painted thumb. Yes. All right. We know what we got going on. I'm going to get a little of my blue paint out. It's going to have a hint of the green for Thalo Turquoise, but be much more to the blue. I'm going to add white to my brush. See how I've done? And I'm going to find some areas to get excited about. Look at that. I'm highlighting some spots. Let's get excited about some spots. Maybe this right here. One of the, what is the stroke? It's just that dashing coming forward. Add a little bit there. Do I want to add some here? We could very lightly. Now see this is, I'm barely touching this. Just kissing a small amount of highlight here. And again, barely touching. Like a kiss, like I'm blowing an eyelash off a face. That's about the pressure I'm working at. Just letting the brush just barely touch the canvas depositing pigment. Here we go. Seeing the faces in the clouds, right? Seeing those edges and finding them and defining them. Now I might come right into my Indian yellow here, getting this very bright green, and come get some more white, like you do. Come here. Let's, uh, let's define this just a smidge. Look at that. Kiss those eyelashes. Stroke, stroke, press, press, press. Oh. Cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Just touching and... I think it's okay. Huh? Okay. I don't know if you guys are here, but I'm going to keep painting. There it goes. It's back. <laughs> All right. We just had a little bobble there. I'm not sure what happened. But it happened. Yeah, I think that uh, it wasn't storm related. That was just uh, that was just unusual. So I'm just finding these edges. All right. Find your edges. Find them and love them. Find them and love them. Create layers in your layers, dashing in that soft circle. I'm going to go even lighter, I feel. 
up here. A little touch of blue on my brush, but even lighter. Because I want even more drama. So I'm just touching. Now that all that's done, I'm going to sort of deepen and darken some of this. So I'm going to get my purple and my magenta. And I'm going to make sure that this is a fairly dark. I'm pushing some of this back into, see I'm pushing some of it back in? Yeah. It's important in space to put some of this depth back if you lose it. Look at that. Yeah. What that does is super important to your spaciness. It really does. Put some, put some, I'm over here and I'm just doing the little circles. I'm putting some depth back into my space. When that's all done, and I don't put the twinkle star until the very, very end. I'm going to take my dotting tool. <clears throat> I'll probably put out some more paint. I'm going to take my bigger ball. I've got two size balls on here. You can use the back of a brush if you don't have a dotting tool. I'm going to dot in the paint. I'm going to do this thing. Little dots. I mean, some of them are bigger, some of them are taller, and I'm going to make little clusters of stars. So I've got to switch over to my small little guy to make these right. I'm going to do that. But I'm just getting control of some of the star patterns that are focused on the piece. This here, a lot of people can splatter a star, right? Especially since I've taught so many lessons on it. But what a lot of artists don't do, and if you can do, you're going to really get some excitement in your paintings, especially your space paintings, is come back in and create areas of interest with a dotting tool to create star patterns that are stronger in your sky. Do you get what I'm saying, babe? Oh, totally. Using both sides of your dotting tool, you can create little clusters, constellations that take a piece from ooh to oh, how did you do that? That's really the difference. This little element here is ooh to oh. And I don't know about you, but I came for the oh. Yep. Right? I came to, I came to, to like to see the picture. Yeah, I want to, like you it. know. And this looks really good. Going to my bigger tool, creating some bigger dots, right? Mm -hmm. Creating some of those dramatic. incredible sparkly skies. And we know we're putting her main star twinkling right here, her north. I saw a lot of you guys used your kids too as models and I thought that was pretty fantastic because some people got excited and did the painting ahead of time, which by the way does not bug me at all. Mm -hmm. If you're like, oh, got it, I'm going to do it now, I'm like, okay, have fun. <laughs> have fun. Enjoy yourself. See, I'm just, so what I'm doing here, I don't know if you guys are noticing this. I'll do this on this last one I'm going to put in. My first dot is pretty big, right? And then my subsequent dot gets smaller, thus creating the variety of sizes that I'm looking to make. If it starts to, and I have to wipe off regularly, and if I need even smaller than that, I switch over to my small head size, but it does the same thing. Now the sky 
Now the sky is galactic. Let's put in some mountains. I like it. You like it? You guys like mountains? I like I, I like the, the sky. I think this is one of the cooler skies. So I'm going to get my chalk pencil in because I want to think about my mountains a little bit before I put them in. And what I like in my mountains is I like to have interesting highlights and lowlights. Also, what I do up here, I'm going to need to have a mild mirror of over here. Oh, right. Yeah. Right? So I need to be thinking about that, but I'll work that out in a second. Now, I want it to be jagged, so maybe this one comes up and goes down, and then he's got, like, a little friend, right? That's like that. And it has a little peak here. And then there's this sort of amazing valley effect. All right. So once I've got that valley... Maybe that valley ends like right here. And see, that's why I like kind of studying that out. And then we come up a little mountain here. Can come over. I'm going to work from my left side now. I'm going to come up, up craggy rocks, geology, volcanic eruptions. These are things I say in my head. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sometimes they help me. I mean, growing up, you know, Rockies and stuff like that probably does help me have a sense of these. But really what it's about is just to recognize that the Earth has been here for a while and it's been hit by meteors and there's been volcanic eruptions and titanic, titanic plates have shifted and pushed, you know, Earth up and you're just wanting to make that sort of random experience. Now, the other thing I'm going to want to talk about to myself is I'm going to say, hey, there's some highlights, right? So I want to create those on the mountains. And that's about recognizing that same thing. Where can my highlights be? So this front, you know, is highlighted, and this front is highlighted. And then, you know, this. And I just want to make sure that I've got that sort of set in my mind. If these are highlighted here, then this side will be highlighted. Whatever I'm doing will be highlighted over here. And then again, uh-oh, my lead's breaking. I don't like that. Highlighted along this front. So see, once I have that in mind, I can look at the top of my sky and do the final touch. Which is? Create the glow along the top of the mountains. Because oh. these mountains need to have a glow along the top or this isn't going to go. Right. So I'm going to take a little of my Indian yellow and some white. If I need to, some glaze because I'm just trying to make sure that right here, just like right along here, And I'm going to see, I'm just going back and forth softly. It's soft brush strokes. This is how I'm blending over a dry area. Right? Let's get some just Indian yellow right here. Coming back. Blending. So I haven't lost any of the passages that I really like, but I'm creating along my mountain ridge just a small amount of glow. Right? I'm going to come across the top here. I don't want to take out all of my cool passages, but I do want along the top of these there to be. And as it's because it's glazing as it comes back here, it can get lighter or darker. This would be really more what I'm thinking back here, but you do want to have it back here. Back here, you may even take it into the orange. Grab a little of your quinacridone. But you just want it to be a glow. Makes a difference later in the painting. And this is the time to get it. All right? Glow it up. Glow it up good. Or you could say to yourself, I'm getting my glow on. Like the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. <laughs> Get my glow. <laughs> Things I say in my head. John listens to me talk to myself all the time, so he could tell you this is like actually some nonsense that I'm always on about. All right, and then come here along this mountaintop, All right? And that is an excellent way to start that here. Yeah. Right? You're looking right there. Is that good? Do you like that? What do you need there? You know, 
you can be like very retrospective and be like, hey, you know, that looks like a little empty in this space. Let me get my small dotting tool and make sure that I have some dots right down here. So space is deep. So you can fill it with stars. Huh? You can fill it with stars. Fill it with stars. What's going wrong there is my brush was got dry paint on it. My uh -huh. dotting tool. And so that always messes with me. So see that just creates some finished cohesion here that you need. And I'm going to get a small do 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 I'm looking for a four bright. Hmm. So I'm gonna get my four bright and I'm gonna come here and I've got I think I don't have to replace my palette quite yet. I think I can finish out my mountains here with this palette. It's gumming up and that's always a problem. All right. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. So I'm gonna come along my mountains. Paint this first one in. It is gumming and I'll have to make a decision because my palette's been out a while in the dry heat what I'm gonna do about that. All right, so I'm gonna take my first little mountain here And now you're going to bring this across. One thing that I'm going to want to get, besides offloading this extra paint, is a little white on my brush. I need a slightly smidgier, lighter color so that I can see the top of that. Maybe a little bit right there. Maybe a little bit right here. I'm creating a small amount of lighting yeah. on the top of these. Now, so I've got this here, and I'm going to just take advantage of it for a second, making sure that as I'm painting these and they're layered, right, this one, this forward facing, see where I kind of drew my highlight? Yeah. I may have to fix my highlights, but I need to know that they're going to be in here just to, so I don't get lost in painting in my mountain. Even though I'm going to even actually come back with quite a warm highlight at this section. I'm going to warm up all my highlights here. But if I don't put this in, I'm going to be just lost. And you don't want to be lost. No. So I'm just following those chalk lines. See how they wander back? Oh, yeah. They create these mountain shapes. It is okay that some of this yellow is showing through, by the way. You want this section to be warm. In other words, more to the yellows and reds and oranges than the blues and greens and purples. And then the rest of your mountains are quite cool, and that's going to create an effect of these are lit, but also in the distance. Neat. That's pretty cool. Which is important. Yes. Important to be far away otherwise what the heck are they doing I come here just making sure if I need some glazing medium I'm gonna get it because it's just I'm gonna get it hmm. get her done okay come along this I'm going to be coming back with very dark mountain, but I just need to know that this is... And see how I've taken this highlight down? That's going to help create some layers of these in this distance, in this space. If we were doing these in the daytime, we'd actually let a lot of the sky reflect back here, and we would do these very lights. It's really interesting what we would do. But this is a very dramatic nighttime event. Is everyone still holding up okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a, they, they really like this. This sky is really cool. This sky is super cool. And these mountains are cool, and this water is cool, and the pier is cool. And the, I almost didn't do the girl on the pier because I was like, this is quite a painting. But then I was like, I'm going to show you the full deal. We're going to go the full the kit and caboodle. Thing. You've heard of the kit? You've heard of the caboodle? We're doing the kit and the caboodle. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue over to my dark's purple. All right. 
coming along here. Now in here, it's okay to, to let it dry brush a little bit over, or let a little of the gold to show through. We don't mind. Every bit of this we can allow just creates incredible painterliness in our, in our work. Right? In our work. Here we go, back of the mountain. Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. They just come together, don't they? They appear. I always felt like back when I used to watch painting on TV, like my favorite part coming in for me was the mountains because it just felt like they came out of nowhere. And I love to see them just appear. I kind of feel that way the whole painting. Yeah? Yeah, just kind of watching it all. Just I appear. think that's why time lapses are kind of fun. Because <laughs> it's just... Well, none of the time. <laughs> All of the payoff. Now I'm going to just come down here and see? That mountain starts to become mm. its, its own deal, doesn't it? So nice. Where are we going? We're going right here. And if you need to, you can get a little white on your brush. Come here and just, whoops, too much white. If you get too much white, just wipe it off and brush it in. See, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Just creating that sort of blended space. And then just come back with your darker color, not to stress about it. Now, while this is having a little dry, Right, I actually gotta finish this one mountain back here. While that is having a bit of a dry, we'll start the front of the water, the deep part of the water. And we'll do some stuff so that we can talk about these mountains. I love the reflection. I don't know who's into the reflection, but I love doing the reflection in the mountains. It's super fun to me. Isn't, that, isn't this just fun? Mm-hmm. Rinsing, 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 rinsing. Now, very dark through here. So come in with your blue and your purple. And right along your water's edge, you're going to create a dark, dark space where the mountains meet your water. Dark, dark space where your mountains meet your water. Right across here. We'll be coming back to do a bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff? A bunch of stuff. Right, but right now what we've got to do is deepen this range so that these can be mirrors. Creating some of that atmospheric perspective. Yeah. Instead of linear perspective, it's all atmospheric perspective today. Letting that dry. Feeling like I need a cup of coffee for the second half. Okay. I or maybe middle thirds or something. This is like a baseball game today. I don't know, inning something. John's making me some coffee. So um, I may at this stage actually freshen my palette. And what I mean by that is I may put my paint back out again. Uh, for me, and this might be true for you, my studio conditions are very dry and very hot because I have a bank of lights above me. And that can start to cure my paint on the palette. Now, artists solve these problems with a bunch of different ways. There's a stay wet palette. And I have a video about a completely free stay wet palette that you can make that actually works pretty good. Um, it's a little unwieldy, but, you know, free. And, of course, they um, sell versions of a stay wet palette. Um, if you have one you love, you're welcome to share it in group, in the Facebook group or on the web page. Um, I like the misters. 
and the glazing medium. But the truth is if you're in the high desert or the low desert actually, if you're anywhere it's just super dry, your paint may be curing very quickly. And so your probably best method or strategy to correct for that will be put out less paint. I gotta put out more paint because I have a show here and you need to see the paint and how it's mixing and have lots of visual information. So that's why I um, will be putting out more paint. So this is me just talking to myself because John is making me a cup of coffee. I'm a, this is the kefir that I'm going to be drinking real quick. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yes, I know this is very stressful to waste, but, you know, for you guys, anything, anything at all. <laughs> so, near. All right, I'll just put out some of my colors again. So I've got my quinacridone magenta. You can see I haven't been doing a very good job of keeping my caps or my threading clean and kind of peel this off. John comes in every once in a while with a uh, tool and cleans these out. This is a lot about me just not being good about recapping because these are self-cleaning caps, but I just never do them correctly. I mean, basically lazy or something. I don't know. Some purple. Doc's purple. I'm going to need some new purple in a minute. Lots of this through the whole painting, so we might as well put out some more. Uh, the storm is, seems to still be okay, so I think over here I'm going to put out my phthalo green. You can watch me peel some more of this. This is me peeling that off. Isn't that fun? Eee, eee. Let's see if I can keep it going. Eee. Oh, look, it's like one piece. Uh-oh, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. But I recovered it. Ah, got it all the way around. Ew. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a goof. So I haven't had to get into the Prussian blue. Oh, darn it. How do my brushes have so much personality. Well, it's because I drop my brushes in my paint on occasion. That's how it happens. I'm looking for my phthalo. My phthalo blue. I'm so blue. Phthalo. Oh, there it is. I'm so blue. I don't necessarily... I'm going to wait to put out my ochre and my burnt sienna in my burnt umber um, because I'm a little, still a little bit away from getting those in. I'm pretty sure this is the kit that I'm going to be using as I come down the painting. So putting that out. Oh look, this is really ready. White is the hardest one to peel for some reason. I can't ever get it in one spot. You're like, oh, I understand why your nails are a terrible wreck now. Yep. I love nails. I love having really fun, arty nails, but then I can't do any of my life. So it's like always this balance between my sense of, you know, having artful nails. Art hands, how they happen. Why, cinnamon. Hmm, coffee. I love my coffee. Oh, I got my New York cup from when I was at Next Up. Oh, I'm loving this painting so far. I'm sorry this doesn't come together in like 30 minutes, but I really appreciate you hanging in. <sighs> Art. Art. It's not a really fast sport. <laughs> let me have a couple sips of coffee. Do we have any questions before I get oh, going let me, to the let me next go back section? Here. I was just up here. You know, we got a whole lot of people here. Lots of people saying hi from all over the world. Oh, my gosh. Connecticut. Lots of people from Australia. Uh... I see lots of people in Europe here as well, uh, Dubai. Oh my I've gosh, been, hello I've been hearing everybody. that we have a more friendly time when we go in the morning. They're, yeah, th that is something that a lot of people have been commenting in here is that they really enjoy the time. They think your hair looks really nice today. Oh, thank you. And they love this painting. That's been a lot of the overwhelming comments in here is they've been just how much they liked the painting. <sighs> I really love this painting. I think this is one of the prettier ones I've offered on the channel. I'm gonna start offering more of these on the channel as long as you guys show up and share them and make every friend you have paint them. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and Holland. Yep, of course. Yeah, so, I, man, it's just everywhere. France and Vegas. That's what everyone is doing now is they're all saying where they're from and saying hello. Oh, shout, uh, shout out some people. Oh, and, and uh, CJ, uh, CJ. C, uh, CG just CG. asked, why do you use palette paper and not glass or plastic palette? Uh, clean up. Clean up. It's clean up. Yeah. One, this gray uh, palette mm -hmm. allows the camera to see the colors better. If you were a plain air painter, if you painted outside, you'd probably use these tools. Yeah. This is, a, this is the Gray Matters palette. It's actually designed for plain air painters, um, though I think they usually build their own stuff. But regardless, they designed it for plain air painters. Yeah. And um, they also have a line of brushes that the, the ferrule isn't shiny. So say you're out in a really bright light and you have a really shiny brush and it reflects in your eye and blinds you. Mm. I've never seen that happen. I've been on a couple plain air events because you can do that. As a, th those are like meetups that you can do. You may not know this. You can go paint outside with some friends. They have meetups. They're like totally free. Oh, yeah. go. There's a plain air society and they all do this. They go walk outside with their little portable kit and they go paint something mm -hmm. live. And that is awesome. Not air conditioned, but awesome. Yes. Well, and you know, it did not like, every, not like a, Rick. Not every place in the world needs air conditioning, though. Well, you know what? I just watch Rick. <laughs> I just watch Rick. That's Rick Nagolero. You can look up bushcraft art. Turns up a whole bushcraft easel. Look Bush, up bushcraft oh, easel because he'll just he like MacGyver's his stuff out of like trees. He does moss. He makes everything. He does. Also, awesome. if you know anything about YouTube, his production is insane. Okay. So back to the mountains, mountain tops. Painting in the mountains. Painting in the mountains, not mountains, the imaginary mountains. I'm back to my imaginary mountains and I'm looking for a brush I feel like I'm gonna wanna play with. And I think I'm gonna get my number two braid here to fiddle with the rest of this. One of the things that I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna warm my highlight. And I'm gonna do that by adding yellow to my purple, right? And when I pull out with the white, you're gonna see what I mean. See how that's warm now? Yes. It's got a little bit of the purple in it. It does gray out. That does happen. Put out some glazing medium and then close this up so it doesn't clog on me again. And I've added a little white to this so I can pull a color. And what I'm going to do is come to the center of this and a little bit the front of this. See that? And I'm just adding this warm highlight that's grayed out to the top of this mountain. This is important because anything that's closer to the light will be warmed up. Even though this is a night fantasy scape, we have to do these things to just tell our eyes that this is really happening. So I'm just adding that warmed up highlight right here. This can actually stay sort of cool and push back because it's further out, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't have to warm up this highlight. I can leave that one rather muted and not talked about. Going to go again here, warming that up. There we go. All the way down here. It's going to get covered up, but I will still do it. Just warmed on this corridor of light. Then I'm going to come get my white. I have not rinsed my brush. This is how it looks. And I'm very carefully going to pull a soft, you can see I'm going dash, pull, dash, dash, pull. But it's just very little going on here, right? Now it's on the edge, pull, dash, dash, dash. Just touching the corner of my brush and pulling this down. There's just a little bit of snow. That one I might get back into my purple and yellow because I want it there, but I just don't want it um, as noticeable. Not Maybe quite as add some of this here. I'm just adding some thoughts to my mountains. Yeah. Not the kind of thoughts that you give that give an eye to, but the kind of thoughts. <laughs> a couple of the girls laughed, <laughs> and some of them were like, "What is she talking about, thoughts?" <laughs> <laughs> that thought over there. Bah. All right. So I don't want bright white. That's too much. It's mixed into my purple. But it is pulling to the top of my mountain. Here I am just pulling this down again. Creating this kind of snow capped effect, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe just a smidge. That's too bright. 
So I don't want that as bright to this back edge because it's further away from the light source. Here we go. There we go. See that? That's nice. I want to make sure that my mountains, my purple mountains, Majesty, are nice and shadowed. Mm -hmm. You know, and they and they have some shape here and valleys and all kinds of things. Look at these guys, be mountains. It's just really fun to kind of think them out. I still think I need to add just a slight highlight there, and that's because of the reflection but I just want it to be super slight. Now, along here, I've got to take my little chalk pencil, and this is always super fun for me because I get way lost in this. I'm gonna sketch a reflection. I'm gonna start at the middle and make oh, yeah. the reverse of what I'm seeing here, but very lightly. In the center, I can do this pretty dark, but as I come out, I have to really sketch lightly. Now, if you weren't good at this, could you use tracing paper? I would use tracing paper. Cool. I'm kind of wishing I had tracing paper now. <laughs> You're doing a pretty good job. Right. And sometimes it helps to come out and be like, oh, no. You're just, you don't have to be perfect. By the way, a little secret to this, just generally doing this is good enough. You're just generally doing this is good enough. You do not have to be perfect. But you should put one more peak in there because there's three peak. I guess not. Maybe not. What? <laughs> there's, I'm all like looking at it, going, maybe you, I, you know, I'm, I'm backseat navigating. Oh, he me. totally backseat. Paints. Do you have a spouse that backseat I ba paints I'm for like, you? I'm like backseat painting. Listen. <laughs> After being here for so long. We all have. A spouse that backseat paints. I'm just saying. A it's significant it's, other. You, Perhaps you, it's your pet. Maybe it's not a human. Do you have a backseat painting pet? Some of us do. And you know how like like you, like cats, super backseat painters. What's what's horrible is 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 like for me, it's like when you count like uh, for me, it's counting things in reflections and car shapes. I, yeah. I you know. Yeah. So, well, do I paint cars? No, I don't. No. I'm not no. great at it. <laughs> I got a car fan here. And it's gonna be a whole thing. Be like. It's a bug. It's good enough. Do you get that it's a car? It's good enough. Good enough. <laughs> so Life. It is. It's, it's marriage. It's sweeter. It's sweeter than this. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> we should make a reflection here, shouldn't we? We should. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's have some fun to do that together. So... What's nice is from here on out, what I can do real quickly, I'll actually grab this number. Oh, well, I took the number off. It's a four. <laughs> I'm going to just so that I can for sure have some brightness through the center here. I'm going to come here with some white. I'm going to curve. See how I've curved? I've got a number four bright. I've curved here. Yep. And now I'm very lightly on the edge. You can see it happening. Just dragging out some white paint. Here, a couple inches out from this, I'm going to make some longer reflections. If I have to switch it to the edge, I will. But I just want to dust a little white. You can see me just going back and forth horizontally. Back and forth horizontally. Dusting these reflections. Dusting, dusting, dusting. It does not need to be a strong white. It needs to be a dry brushed white. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it does turn into a strong white, don't panic. Mostly in general, don't panic while you're painting. <laughs> I'm just creating uh, enough lightness that when I come through with my yellow, it can be uh, quite dramatic, is what I'm doing. Now I'm going to pull out some of my purple. I'm going to pull out some of my yellow here. And maybe here at the edge, right? I'll add some of that, just a little bit. Now, what could I have here? I could have a little reflection here, and I could have a smidge of a reflection here. I'm gonna have to take out this white chalk in a minute. Yeah. Big time. But right now, I just need to say a little reflection, and maybe a little here, and then there can be some here. 
no. a smidge here. I remember and you then saying a, a smidge here. We got to just be smidgy about it. Yeah, guys. I'm uh, totally gonna disclaimer. I'm not a painter, guys. I so my backseat my backseat questions are based solely on being a spouse and pushing the buttons and watching her do this. Okay. But uh, now there. I'm can, adding some light purple to this. Can you flip this over? I remember you saying something about like when you do it upside down, it helps your brain sometimes. It you could. You could totally flip this over, and that's not that's that's a really good suggestion. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that we, you know, are are showing our little mountains as they, you know, some little bit of that. They were all like, "Do you paint, John?" I'm like, "No, I do not. No, I do not paint." I'm gonna softly kind of smidge one here. Little trick on a reflection is sometimes if you go like this, look, if you mix up some horizontal strokes with some other strokes that'll make it feel reflecty. 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 Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna darken up some of these mountains. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because I really I want them to, you know, I don't want any white chalk. That's not helpful. And we're just trying to get some of that reflection in there yeah we need to just show that they're here yeah they don't again need to be perfect but they do need to be there it's a emotionally satisfy it's emotionally it's oddly satisfying <laughs> emotionally research. satisfying reflections yeah so see how we're doing these mm -hmm. and we're making this this water very dark aren't we they're very dark they're darker than what's around them We're pretty good. This is pretty good. We've got some stuff, don't we? We have yeah. some reflections, but cool. we don't have what we need for it to feel like we want it to feel. What is that? Well, we're going to need a couple areas that are super reflecty that look a lot like what's above them. Just a couple spots. So we're going to get our small little brush out. And we're gonna get our yellow Which into our brush? purple. This is the number two bright. Number two bright. Okay. Number two bright. Look at the size of that compared to my thumb. This is very teeny. Teeny. Well, I mean, it's not like it's not like a miniature brush, but it's a little brush. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little brush. I wouldn't do a big giant canvas with it. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> well, right. it would take a long time. Or I guess it could. It's okay. just all sorts now that I've got a reflection or something that I like, I'm going to come here. And I'm going to create just a little peak that's more defined. and We got that here, don't we? A little bit. A little bit, just a smidge there, and we don't need that much here. Then we're going to get our white on our brush, and let's. This white we'll be keeping. That needs to be not too bright, but still bright enough to show. Can we see it now? Oh, yeah. Can you see it now? I can see. And again, it's not about, you You could do it perfectly, but because this is water, you can kind of make some of this a little ripply, can't you? Yeah. So you're okay. So you're all right. Now we're going to get a little fiddly around this spot here with our water. I'm going to take a little of my magenta and a little of my purple. I'm going to work them together. And I'm going to come along the top of my mountains very carefully. And I'm going to start pulling this over. So I, what I've done is I've outlined. All right, see how I'm outlining? And then I start pulling the horizontal stroke. Hmm. And that's going to protect what I'm doing. When I've got that, right, maybe you grab a little of your yellow, your Indian yellow into it, 
maybe a little of your white. You don't want it too light, but you, it's helpful to have it there. Let's come here. See, we're going to glow a little bit. So along the mountaintops. And now let's ripple out. Ripple, 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 ripple. This is some work right here. Yeah. Do the work. Do the work. Be rewarded. <laughs> Can get some more magenta on my brush. And you're going to see I'm going back, forth. I'm making little water dashes, aren't I? Look at my brush. It's got some white. It's got some yellow. It's got some magenta on it. What's happening here now? Stuff. All right, look at that. Look yeah. at that little spot right there. How good does that look? Pretty good. Could it look better. It looks really cool. I like it. You Could see it zoomed look in better. there? So you can see it, oh, you can see it zoomed in because you're close to it. That's you right. don't need to see the zoom camera. <laughs> so I'm getting my grade color back on my palette, but more into the white like I did on the mountains here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure that this has a little bit of that. I just want to make sure. Right, there we go. Just making sure those reflections are looking good. Yeah. And if they're not, I come back and I mess with it because I'm not backing off this painting to this painting. It's done. So this painting is done. There we go. You can come back and whatever you gotta do to make it work. Whatever you gotta do to make it work. I think that looks really sharp. It's okay. All right, I'm gonna come with my quinacridone and maybe a little of my yellow here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to work some of this right along this mountain top. See, I'm lining along that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just pull this out. It's okay that the purple is showing through underneath. I'm just trying to show that this is brightening up. There we go. I got a little white under my brush. Still need it darker than that. So a lot of times I'm like, oh, too light, too dark, too what, too this. And then I just work it out. So that was yellow, Indian yellow, and quinacridone. I'm just trying to make sure that my glow in my ref water reflections is still pretty dark, but somehow feels like what's above the mountains. See? Yeah. And I'm dash, dash, dashing it out. See how hard I'm pressing? Not this hard. Not this hard, that hard. And see the brush flitting out. Are we getting this? Oh, yeah. All right, so now we have this very delicate area worked out. This is awesome. This was an important one to get. I'm going to sip my coffee for a second. Sippy, sippy. Sippy, sippy. Start putting in my dramatic water reflections. I like the water So I can put him up here. Yeah. And then take forever painting my girl. How are you guys doing? <laughs> well, the nice thing is, is that we've got a nice, good, clean signal today. And there's <laughs> lots and lots of people here hanging out with us. So It's how we paint it. It's how we do. Yeah. So I'm going to get a little of my yellow. I'm going to tint it with a smidge of my magenta. And I'm going to get some white in here. And I'm going to come here in the center and start talking. And now you can see how the white has helped. Oh, yeah. In the water. And it has helped. I'm going to make sure this comes along my mountains. And now that they are crisply lined in, they make sense, don't they? Mm -hmm. As a reflection. So now you have this amazing mountain reflection. Sometime I'll show you how to do the blurry one of trees. Who like looks at the blurry one of trees and goes, how? <laughs> how? <laughs> I understand that actually, looking at something and going, how would I paint that? That's crazy. I'm adding a smidge of magenta. See, I pull the brush out in the paint mm 
Mm -hmm. This just puts a little pigment on there. And then I come here and I pull a little bit out. And then I come and I pull out a little white. And then this awesomeness happens. So I can just be like, da, na, na, na. more yellow, pure yellow. Getting some more Indian yellow, pure yellow. And I'm coming here. And you can see how the dry brushing actually worked in my favor here because some of the painting is showing through underneath, creating layers and layers of tonal variance, huh? Mm, yeah. So I'm just pulling that out. Look, I'm just going back, forth, back, forth, back, and I'm not evenly moving, right? This is just a number four bright. I've just got some pure Indian yellow happening here. Just pure Indian yellow. Back and forth. This, 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 this. Super horizontal in my world. If I did ripples, I might be doing brush strokes coming this way. If I did. Now I'm going to get some of my magenta. Some just pure magenta. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to get some water on my brush. My brush is getting gummy. That's because the paint is drying on it. Get some pure magenta. And I'm going to, see how I just come on the edge here? Oh, yeah. This is what I do. And dash out. And then back. Back, forth, back. Little strokes. Longer strokes. Little strokes. Longer strokes. Dash, dash, dash. Dash, dash, dash. You guys did the pier. You're so ready for this pier. Yeah. If you guys painted the pier, you are ready, 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 Freddy, for this pier. I'm going to pull this down into my blue a little bit and kind of come over. I'm just going back and forth, resolving and starting to talk to the edges here. But is that, was that me or was that blurry? No, I, just, I it okay. went blurry for just, I was, I was adjusting the focus. Oh, I mean, I know I need to get some glasses, but I was freaking out there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to come here with my magenta again. And you can see I'm just on the edge, back, 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 back. Look how that creates the sense of rippling water. This is really fun to paint. I love this piece. This may end up being the thumbnail, so, because it's coming out even better than the study. Well, actually, the second study. It is okay to paint an idea out and then paint a couple variations on it. That's called iteration to get a sense of what you're wanting to do. Coming back here, back and forth, all the way down, a little bit over my turquoise green. Layering is important. All right, here we go. I'm doing really well. Now let's get some magenta and some yellow, and it's just super bright. Well, let's get some white into it. So it's super orange, and let's come here on the edges. Here we go. Dash, 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 dash. You can just see it. Not a lot of pressure. All right? Not a lot of pressure. If it's too white, you can see that I just blended that out, didn't I? Yep. I didn't even mess with it. I'm like, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Offload, press out, reload. That's the Sherpa way. Little ways I can serve my paint. I have to go through so much waste just in filming. So I'm just making sure that this doesn't have obvious, like, like a straight corridor. <gasps> I fix that. <laughs> do, 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 do. Alright. Hopefully I can repair that there. Clean water. So I just accidentally smidged a little paint on here, but if this is dry, I should be able to wipe it off like I just did. Some people like to let their sky dry overnight so they can wipe off any paint mistakes. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's come down the corridor again. Let's get some Indian yellow and some white. Yeah. And let's take this bright highlight. Just a smidge. Look at this. Oh, yeah. That lovely. 
Some of this is going to be like covered it. by her. Yeah, but it peeks out the sides. It peeks stuff. out the sides, and some of you are going to want to not paint her. So that is the other reason, and I talked to Joan about this mm -hmm. at the time. Because I was like, do I add the girl, do I not add the girl? And if I complete this whole painting as if she's not going to be on the painting, then those of you who didn't want to add her get up here going into a gorgeous landscape. Right, and then you can, if you want to add a girl or a boy, you can just or hang in with me and add a girl. <laughs> yeah, you can add anything you like to the end of it. You really can. You could probably put pretty take, and pretty much any of the girls and dresses and put them in here that you've done. Pretty much. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> That's my whole jam, man. So these are light. They're coming out. Are you guys just freaking out about oh, this? Oh, this is great. Yeah, everybody's I'm just having a crazy this. idea. Oh. Are you ready for it? I suppose, yes. What if I take this all the way to the pier? Okay. Right? We go off air, we replace this thumbnail with that. Okay. And then we come back and do the girl. Okay. Sure. I don't know if that's a good idea, though. Think on that. Think on that. Think on that. Probably just stick with it. I was just trying to think how people could have two paintings. Well, we could just time stamp in the, in, in the description where... Where the, uh, oh, you just wouldn't know it from the outside. I'm mixing a little magenta and a little purple. And I'm coming dashing back and forth. I'm just saying that I'm loving this painting so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> just like loving it. It's so beautiful. Who else thinks it's just gorgeous? Well, what we'll do is we'll take a snapshot as soon as you get done there. And then I'll make a, uh, we'll, we'll have an ore. Someday. There you go. So I'll, I'll work it out. You'll work it out? I will work it out. You'll work it out. I know what you want. I you think we can make it happen. You do? I think so. All right. You guys patient with that? They're always so patient. They're always. amazing. So I'm going ahead and taking this dark value you can see down the side. Right? Because I need it. I needs it. I needs it so much. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I'm just, you can see I just go push, push, push. And I'm just, yeah, I'm going to have reeds here, but this way when I layer them over, they can peek out. I'm so in love with this piece. I'm so in love with this piece. <laughs> Sorry, super excited. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, bam, let me show you a sky. It is. It's a, I like the sky. I'm feeling my Sherpa today. <laughs> Everything I paint should be like this, only like this. Yay! <laughs> okay, back with the magenta and purple coming from the edge. Making sure that that's nice and showing. And I'm just, again, it's the dashing back and forth, isn't it? This is so pretty. This is so pretty. Mm. I would just make a nice big painting for the back of the sofa. Just oh, saying. yeah, it would. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't you just always feel good looking at it? Yep. Sorry. I, I lost like myself. I would like it. I've lost myself. You know that I love it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really happy right now. It's really good. <laughs> You're just singing random lyrics to... Random ran songs that I change up and make up badly. Yeah, you just, Nobody's you, trying out for Idol. I haven't come to like America's Got Talent, so I'm fine. So you're singing the wrong lyrics to the song. Yeah, dude, that's my whole thing. You're just making them as you go along. I do. It's my studio. My studio. You're studio. like, I have this song rattling around in my head that's somewhat Tiffany inspired, and I will <laughs> reach back into the Wayback Sherpa machine and pull out some lyrics that might go together. <laughs> I brush my canvas. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, there you go. So this is this is how you know you've been married because you can just you can get your your spouse I mean, look going. At this. <laughs> look at this. I okay. So like, I just love it. I love that I can paint this, and I love that I can show you how to paint this, and it just makes me want to cheer and cry. And go bananas and be crazy all the time because this is the jam. I like him. I'm so awesome. Are you <laughs> awesome? I feel really awesome right now. <laughs> yeah.
that's how I do. CJ. This, I mean, you need a picture of it like this. This is so good. CJ loves it. Loves it when you break out into song. <laughs> do I? <laughs> it's great. Let's get some. Let's get some turquoise going, guys. Okay. Let's get some turquoise going. So I'm gonna take my phthalo green and my phthalo blue, and I agree with you, CJ. I'm Aunt, awesome. Annie sings when she paints too. Annie does. Yeah. Awesome. Annie. We sing together. You, we ever do a retreat, there will be singing. <laughs> there will be singing, singing and bad dancing and hugging. Yes. Yes. All right. Reflections, though, right now. Reflections. <laughs> Reflections. All right. So I'm so excited with myself. So I'm back and forth. I'm just dashing. You can see that I'm just using the edge of the brush, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go real slow so you see how that happens. So this pressure is so light, isn't it? It's just so light, this pressure. It's so light and so delicate. And it's so much fun to work with. <laughs> Do we have a teenage daughter that can microwave my coffee? Well, <laughs> that I paint all the time. <laughs> she should be always microwaving my coffee. <laughs> should she? I don't know where she's at. She's found some secret tech she's not supposed to be on and she's online. Is she? <laughs> she's a good girl. All right, so I'm just brushing back and forth. And you can just see it's just light. Now here's the jam, here's the zazzle, right? Let's go back here. Let's take some of this reflection back here because what would happen? All of the sky would be reflecting in this amazing, unbelievable lake where all dreams come true, right? So I'm back here between the mountains and this and I'm creating just smidges, little hints of color, softly brushed in, aren't I? little glaze if my paint is having trouble flowing out and it is but I don't mind look at this just back and forth just back and forth oh I'm so in love with this piece so just back and forth just back and forth I am awesome everything is awesome everything is good when you're part of a team everything is awesome so just just making sure that that sky, right, is everywhere in the water. It's everywhere, isn't it? Oh, so beautiful! Let's sip some coffee and bask in our awesomeness. Because what did we do today? Painted a sky. We rocked out the art is what we did today. This is looking really great. I can't wait to see the pier come in and the, and the rest of it. This is just really coming together. It is. It's so pretty. I haven't, I haven't stopped. I'm not going to just... Oh, I know you're not. <laughs> pat myself on the back and go, no, I'm just too great to continue. <laughs> like but I am having some James Brown, like, yeah! Drop the brush. I'm done. <laughs> I'm just feeling so good. I'm not saying I'm like Turner at all. I'm just saying I get how sometimes he must have felt like the bomb. Mm -hmm. I bet Bob did too. I think that's a wonderful feeling when you realize that you've got a skill and you can create real intense beauty. You know, I've always loved that. John's always like, he's, he's been here with me when I've hit a painting or I've really liked what I'm doing and I get mm -hmm. all excited. But this new layer of sharing, being able to paint like I paint with other people, that's a special, special thing. Yeah, it's really nice to have you guys here and be able to, to, have, to show you guys how you can do this yeah. and to see all of your paintings. And that's, that's you know, what we really love. Oh, man, so good. I'm going to come and get a little of my purple and a little of my blue again and just make sure that I've got these outer edges dark. Look, see how I'm just tipping them in? A little bit here, but there. All right. Loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. It's not quite done. One last little thing in the water until I get this pier in. All right, which is I'm going to take a little of my Indian yellow. 
just a smidge of white. See how I've just tipped the edge with white there? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure that a little of this light, so I'm going back and forth, comes through the blue. Just a smidge around the sides here. And both sides. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited. This would have been just cool right now. Yeah. Just the reflection all the way down and all that. If you guys want to just take the reflection all the way down and all that, I totally get it. Um, I'm loving my life right now. <laughs> I'm loving my art. Like sometimes when your skills just come together and you're just like, man, I'm so into what I'm doing. This is just so joyful. It's, a, it's like a, there's certain songs I get so excited about. And they're just so joyful in my soul. It's like they just lift me up to a better, higher place. Sometimes painting does that too. So it's, a, it's like joy for your eyes. Oh, so happy. So, so, so happy. Let's take that in for a second and just go, we awesome, we awesome. We totally, totally awesome because we did it. We're awesome. We're so, so awesome. Woo! I think I could give you some music for two. You can. I can. I feel like we have to celebrate. I can give you bubbles. Look at that. And you know what? We've had a really big crowd here. We've been, we've been going. We've been up. We were up over 300. We're now just a little under 300 now. So when we get to, when we get to our 300 people, we like to celebrate that we're Sherpa and get together and turn our music and our bubbles and celebrate and do a little dance. And Cinnamon's feeling good in the morning here, so we're doing a little dance too. So thank. And if you guys are at home, don't forget if you can't get up and dance, to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes because we can't gotta get up and celebrate with us. So thank you guys. We can't wait to see your paintings and how you, well you guys do with all of this. So I look forward to it. Thank you, guys. Everybody <laughs> loves the bubbles. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so this is probably that point in a painting where you're like, I did really good, and you panic. Because you don't want to do any more. Because you don't want to do any more, because you were awesome until this point, and everything else could just take it. <laughs> I get that feeling. So <sighs> we will take a... Yeah, you, you, you know. No, I'm going to put the pier in. You put the pier in? I got to put the pier in anyways, right? All right. So we're going to put the pier in, and what I'm going to say is, when you're at that spot in the painting where you know you were awesome, mm -hmm. try to realize that it's not, okay, so you know how sometimes something happens, like you flip a cup and it lands the right way, and you're like, that will never happen again? Yeah. Art is in no way like that. <laughs> right. You can do this again. Yeah. My mom and I are like, people are like, how can you just get rid of art or give it away or sell it or whatever? Mm -hmm. We're like, I made it. I mean, it's not like I can't just make it again. Right. You can make it again. Yeah. So at this stage of the painting, when you're like, can I go for it? Yes, you can. Because you did it. You Even if you're not drinking the awesome coffee that I'm drinking. <laughs> Feeling uh, so amazing about yourself. Awesome coffee. so amazing about myself today. Spilling coffee all over the place. Don't care. I just, uh, the paintings just turned out really good. Mm -hmm. it really I is. love it. I love it when I get to show up and be like, yeah, mm. I'm the Sherpa. Recognize. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> Chalk pencil, T square time. All right. All right. You have a traceable, and I will actually make another traceable for this exact image. Mm -hmm. Right. You have the traceable for the one I did for the 100K show, but I'm going to make another one. This is all covered in bubbles um, for this one exactly. So, one of the first things that I want to look at is how long is my pier? And my pier looks to be nine and a half centimeters. Okay. Which is three and something eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like to be about nine and a half centimeters. Almost ten. So one of the things I'm going to do is come to my canvas, find that spot again, that distance, and make a little mark. So I know how far out that little sucker goes. Mm-hmm. Then at the bottom, right, at about two inches and two inches. So two inches on each side at the bottom. I'm going to make a mark. 
two inches, which is five centimeters almost. A little bit past five centimeters. There it is. So there we go. I'm going to make a soft, very soft, because I'm going to be erasing it with water in a second line coming out here. All right, and then I will connect. Oh, what's the length of this? Let's see how long it is. The end. So three inches across. Hmm. So it's about three inches across at the top. So I'm going to be like, doo, doo, doo. I'm just trying to measure my thing out. So from like three to six is about the end of my pier and my ruler. Like a chalk pencil on canvas board. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to pull this in at an angle. I know. <laughs> Maths, not my favorite. <laughs> uh oh, lost my two inch mark. Put it back. I erased it with my finger. Now, is, that, is that a white charcoal pencil or is it a white? Yeah, this is a General's white charcoal pencil. They're okay. Yeah. That's what I have to say about that. They are okay. And John has a really cool thing where he squares it up and does maths. I just eyeball that sucker in. And I've got bushes in front of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not as big of a deal. <laughs> they correct for perspective. They really do, man. A bush corrects for a lot of perspective mistakes. <laughs> well, because I've got this really cool thing here and I don't want to lose it, right? No, so I'm just going to be kind of mellow about everything. Now, what I can do to get rid of the chalk lines I don't want is get my clean water on a clean brush, a little bit damp, and then just very lightly pull all that off. Here. Pier's all ready to go. Pier's all ready to go. Are you loving that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do the base of our pier in a crazy thing. Let's do it in black. 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 I'm just using this uh, number eight Cambridge because it's already in my hand. And I'm going to just block in this in black. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do on this pier is I looked at a bunch of old piers and docks mm -hmm. and they had the ones that were on the horizontal had this really kind of cool uh, rough hewn wood edge kind of like a little roughy yeah and so I'm going to try to if you can see that I'm just like really with my little bristles and I'm just letting that be rough might go a little bit see yeah and take a little bit past it just be like they don't have to be perfect this is uh, a little little boat dock at this amazing lake that was built to just probably do a little rowboat and it was made by hand and so maybe old barn wood and I'm just using my fluid black here. So you've got some stories there about how that's... I always have stories in my paintings. I believe stories in the paintings are a big deal. I'm not saying that is the only way to think of it. I'm just saying for me I'm a world builder, and there's a whole story here, right? And I'm just building it. See how this, I switch the brush to its like edge and just touch it to get this weird little dock edge. And then I brush across and then weird little dock edge. See how rough it is? Mm -hmm. It's fun stuff. Fun stuff. It's all just coming right in. It's not a long dock, right? This is just, again, for a little boat, mm -hmm. little thing. Now, I'm still going to paint in both posts on the pier simply because, one, you may not put the girl in. And if you don't put the girl in, right? So cool. I'm just loving this painting. I just really loving it. So much. Do, 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 do.
All right. Now that I've got my basic little dock event here that I know I'm going to be like full on putting bushes in front of so I don't have to be all stressed about it in any way. I'm going to also put a couple little piers at the end just on the inside of the lip here and I'm just going to use my brush to create them. They're not they're not particularly tall or anything. I initially did this um, with the idea that I was going to do a lantern here and then I didn't like the lantern. There was a lot of painting out and repaint. Yeah, we did a lot of tests on this one, didn't we? Yeah, I just w just could not find, but I mean, I'm finding it now, and that's the thing. It's like art is a journey. You may not love your painting the first time you try the experiment of doodling it, but the third or fourth time you look at it and paint what you love and then change it up, you may be like feeling like me, just like ready to shout from the rooftops, I'm artist! <laughs> <laughs> right? Now, I want this to dry completely before I put out my brown. Yeah. I can, it's not going to take it too long to dry, so we can do a quick q and I'm going to sip my coffee, and then I'm going to hit it with a hair dryer. How y'all loving it? Good. I seriously wish it was just this dock to this landscape. I feel like. Yeah, no, they, they really like this, and they really appreciate that you're going to do, uh, that you're going to give them both the, uh, uh, the, both one with and without. So yeah. I'll take, I'll come over and I'll take a quick picture oh, of this. Awesome. John always has a plan. You have a plan, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. John has a plan on how. So yeah, we'll go over take a picture. We'll be able to give them. We'll be able to get that. Get get a picture of that for you. Oh, perfect. All right. Let's. Sorry, I keep stepping on my. Oh yeah, no, no. It I'll... just is under me today. All right. Drying it. Have I mean, some time talking to stunt hands. He's I'm, awesome. I like hello. him. <laughs> hello, guys. And thank you. We've been, this is a this is a longer than normal paint. Then and you're a lot. You guys are hanging in here with us. This is a. But we're. The, you know, she's, we're gonna we're gonna get that the, the pier in there. She's got to do some more uh, little uh, got some, some bushes and shrubbery in there, and then the girl, and then some stars, I think. So we're looking forward to seeing all of your versions of this too. Of course, you can check us out at the website at www.theartsherpa.com. And we've got chat and our and and our calendar and all that stuff is up there, so you can find out about it. And as I said before, our upcoming stuff. Uh, is uh, Southwest Week, and it'll be the 10th through the 16th of next month. So September 10th through the 16th. And um, what else? What else? I'm sure there's other things that I'm going to be talking about, but yeah. Mostly it's that I've, well, there she is. That I, 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 I ran out of things to say, is what it is. <gasps> I'm just loving it so much. I'm looking forward to seeing this come together. I want to see too. it. I want. I, I can't wait to see it. I'm going to use my scruffly little silver Cambridge number four here. Yeah. Because it's my stiffy, scratchy brush, and I think it's going to do a good job for me. I'm going to get out my burnt ember. Uh-huh. Um, I am going to get out my burnt sienna. At this stage, you can... To cool your your wood beams and stuff, you could use your uh, Thalo Blue. I'm probably going to use my Prussian, or you could use an Ultramarine. And I just like to sometimes use a different blue when I'm cooling my wood, um, simply because sometimes it will uh, make it pop out in the painting. Because it doesn't have the unifying Thalo undertone. So we're going to see how that works. You could use ultramarine or phthalo where I'm putting out this Prussian. You could. But I'm going to start to... Let's take maybe the Prussian and the burnt sienna. See, it just... What happens sometimes with phthalo and uh, burnt sienna mm -hmm. is they go green. This won't go green, if that makes sense. Yes. And my first pier beam, which I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah. We can see okay. It. Is my biggest one. And I'm going to just dry brush very lightly this dark color. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to skip a little kind of groove and make a slightly smaller pier beam here. Yeah. Slightly smaller. 
I'm so into this. And uh, like, even if 10 of you were here, I would still be having this much fun because honestly, this has just been a joy to paint. Sometimes stuff is just such a joy to paint. This mm -hmm. one is slightly smaller than the one in front of it. Right? And then I'm just going to keep making them smaller as they get further away, right? Till eventually I'm just kind of coming across in this little streak, right? See how that happened? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can come in and take a little Prussian on my ultramarine if I need to. I mean, my burnt. I say ultramarine. All right. So either one of those will work. Now, actually, I'm feeling like outside of the grasses, I'm pretty good with my, my burnt here. So I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna. I'm going to mix it into where I had a little of my Prussian, but it's still, so I don't want it like completely raw burnt, but I want it toned back. And I'm going to come here. Look at that. Now, one little thing you could, I'm not going to do it, but you could do a knot. Well, maybe I'll do a knot. Oh yeah, it's a little it's a little drama to your to your to your boards there. Yeah, so basically that's just gonna be me make going around and then I'll come back with my highlights to make the knot on a small brush. And I'm just dry brushing this wood. And you can see if you've never done this, if you've done the phthalo blue and the uh, burnt sienna, you get green. But here you're not. You're just getting a knocked back kind of brown. And as we go, we're just dry brushing, leaving the dark to create a shadow, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to wipe this off, but not rinse. I'm going to get a little of my phthalo blue over to my burnt umber. And I'm going to add some white to that. See that white? Mm-hmm. I'm going to weather my wood. I'm also going to come around my knot, see, just very lightly. And put a little in the center. Not a lot of this. You're making some dried wood. This has been out in the sunlight. I don't want to take out my dark values, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to create this rough, interesting wood texture. This is how I do the wood. Lots of ways to do the wood. You got a different way you like to do wood? I don't, I don't mind. I'm not upset. <laughs> I like to, while my brush is still dirty, get just a little yellow ochre on here. And add a smidge of that as well a smidge. My wood has character. It's pure as interesting. I want it to, how's it looking against the, can I see the full screen? Oh yeah. Yeah, I just want it to stand out. Just want it to stand out. You just go and go. See? Now mm -hmm. it's standing out. Now it's standing out. It's so cool. So cool. Now I've got to do some of this here. So I'm going to go back and take some of my Prussian and some of my burnt sienna. And I'm going to just come here and add that a little bit to this wood. Let's get a little bit of our burnt umber and our Prussian blue in there to make the little highlight color. And on the inside of this, I'm going to just weather that. See that? And if I want a highlight, I'm going to get a little of my white. Interestingly enough, a little of my Indian yellow. I have not rinsed my brush, have I? Mm -mm. And I'm going to just touch and here on the edge of the dock, see what I'm doing? A little more Indian yellow, but it's grayed out by the paint that's on it. We're just adding a little light from what's going on around it. You see that? Oh, yeah. I'm 
drama. Mm -hmm. Drama. I just, I just did rich legs. Did you hear me? Drama. Drama. <laughs> All right, I'm okay. Okay, so now that I've done that and I've created that, that sense of, of light effect and so you're just tapping my brush in. It makes it feel like rough wood, doesn't it? Using a rough brush, tapping it in. It's so cool. Oh, I'm so into myself. Honey bunny, microwave mom's coffee for 30 seconds. I love you so much. You're the best daughter who ever lived. You're so good. Thank you for being my muse. Okay. Are you guys kind of freaking out a little bit on how awesome this all is? Because I certainly am. I certainly am. So now we just get a little, some grasses. 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 That's what do I want to grass with? Ooh. Well, no, if I show y'all a new brush, then y'all feel like you have to use that brush to make that thing. But I could show you a cool brush that does it. <laughs> you know? yeah. But I don't want to give everyone a panic attack about what they got to paint with. All right. So I'm just going to use a bright. I'm going to use a black pearl number four. Right. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my Prussian blue and my burnt umber in a smidge of black. All right? Okay. Thank you so much, pumpkin. You are such a good girl. I appreciate you so much. All right. So I'm just loading up this brush and I'm going to make some grasses. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Oh, they're right next to me. Okay. I'm like, where did my reference go? Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to just see what I got. Press in, come up and release. Press in, come up and release. Some other things I'm going to do, I'm going to press in and curve the other way and release. Press in, curve and release. Can you see this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some of these will go right over my dock. Press in and release. This is going to take a minute, but I'm willing to be in it for the minute. Now I'm Cassius Clay. I'm feeling kind of Cassius Clay today. <laughs> All right, so I'm just releasing. See? If I need to add a little water to my paint to improve the fluidity, can you see how I did that there? I dip in mm -hmm. and I swirl around and I don't do more than that. Oh, blue. See? Yep. Then I offload it, press out, press out, reload my tip, come back and have a grass. This is pompous grass. How do you know? Maybe it's very nice grass. I want it to be quite dark here at the corner, full and rich. And then we're going to use values and different things to delicately define it could be sassy grass. Press in and release. Is everyone pressing in and releasing? Press in and release. I just grabbed some fluid black. Now right here, going over this, at first I'm going to come over it with some black. Notice that I left a lot of the little edge peeking through. I'm going to retain that. Loading up with black and my other mixture. Coming back. I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to press in and curve up and swirl. See? Curve. I'm on the edge. I'm back from my brush. You can see how I'm holding it. This is a very light pressure. I'll come in and darken this section that I know has to be dark, painting more aggressively than I am at the ends. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Come over here. Let's be light about it. Let's be chill. All right. Edge of my brush, right? I don't want to paint out my knot. 
Mm. Mm -mm. Do not I'll rinse knock. out my brush a lot. And grab oh, the same thing, number four braid. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to put out some of my bum 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 bum. My Bertsy Anna. Bum 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 bum. My Bertsy Anna. Then I might tone back with a little bit of my Prussian blue. Add a little of my glazing medium. I, I want it to be bright, but not so saturated. It's a very bright, powerful color. Mm -hmm. It will be important for this grass for us not to let it overwhelm us, except in a couple of places. So see, soft and pull. See how I'm doing? Yeah. Soft and pull. Let's bring a little over here and come and finish some of this. Same thing. On the edge, gentle. There we go. We click zoomed in. Can we see it? Oh, yeah. Okay. I can zoom in even more. Oh, I think it, you're, yeah. <laughs> if you focus it, though, there it goes. There we go. See, I'm just very gently creating that space. Very gently creating that space. I will wipe off, but not rinse out, and I'm going to come over into my Indian yellow with this color. And I'm going to get a little white. I'm going to come back. And I'm just very lightly dusting this as if the light has come through and warmed some of the ends of the grass. Can we see that effect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That is very important. That's very dramatic. Pick up a little more. I'm offloading, push, push on the edge of my brush. But at the edge here, just working the edge of my grass now. And these soft, look at this little, see these soft little strokes? Just on the edge. Just on the edge. So proud of this. Just on the edge. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Oops. All right. Last, last little bit here. I'm going to just get my brush with the white and more yellow. Just a couple places. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Big deal. It's a big deal. Just those little light. Yep. Big deal. You need to do it. Here I come here. Just painting. Jumped on me. My life away. To all of you who are painting today, I applaud you. They all really love the sky and the water. Oh, it's so much. Isn't it just so much? There you go. That's the start of how you create this sort of really dramatic grass. But wait, we want it to be pompous grass, don't we? So you have to add the little floofy things. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put out a little fluid white. This is going to help me. And I'm going to get my Indian yellow and my white. And I'm going to do a couple of these. I'm going to say maybe there's one right here. Just this dot, dash, 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 dash. This is going to be a little bit longer here. Curve around this side.
Now, I can come in, I think I'm going to actually probably hit these in a, I'm going to put some dark here in the center of this and come back and work it again. Let me, I think I'm going to put these in with the dark color first and then highlight them. So I'm going to get, this is a number little zero bright. This is the, let's see what exact size is this. Yeah, number one bright. And uh, not bright, round. Hello, brushes, learn to describe them. I want a very fine line. Then I'm going to come highlight in a second. going to make some little puffs here that are enjoyable to me. I'm going to do them in shadow first so that when I highlight them, they feel a little more three-dimensional. Let's have maybe one more somewhere over here for balance, shall we say? Like coming right up over the dock. And this is just, I like pompous grass. You can leave it as just plain grass if you don't like pompous grasses. If you don't like your grass all stuck up, that's fine. Hmm. But I, I grew up in a place that always had pompous grass around, so it's just something you would see near the water. Over there on the other side. Huh? I just hit you on the other side there, and I I know, am. I'm going to be over here for a second. You see, I'm just making the little shapes. And then this fine, fine little reed kind of line. My fine, fine reed line. I think I want to curve one back this way, just for balance. What do these do in the design? They keep the viewer contained and traveling into the sky. Yeah. Focus your eyes. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Everything about design is about trying to find a focus for your, you know, your eyes, actually. Yeah. I'm going to make a little one down here just to create a layer inside this grass, right? Yeah. Now, once that's all done, I'm going to come back with my Indian yellow and my white again. Now, all much more prepared with my highlight. I'll go come back and highlight this again, and it will just look a little better. Isn't that nice? Just a soft, gentle little hair highlight along the, the grass edge. Let's get some yellow, Indian yellow. See, just pushing this here. Let's come here. Get a little of my fluid white. Let's pick up the edge of this. Look at that, picking up the edge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up the edge of some of these a little bit. Look at that. creates like almost a sparkling light through effect. Almost a sparkling light through effect. There we go. Add some maybe little delicate leaves here. I'm fiddly. All right, back into my mix here, my Indian yellow and my white. I'm going to come in, come right over my dark. Let's get a little more aggressive in this one. You can see that? There's a little tiny one right here. I see. Going to also get some white and just tip that so it's really popped. I 
you can come along this and highlight that stem if it helps. One of the tricks I do is I don't try to make a continuous line all the time. Sometimes I just try to act like a little glimmer of light. Oh yeah. Has caught the edge of my stem. Right. Now, I'm going to do something in characteristic. I'm going to sign it now because John's going to photograph it. Oh, yeah. So we can have it in both states. And then, um, isn't that nice? Yeah. Loving that. Might come back with just some pure dots of just, there we go. Just a paint it out. Fun, my guy. I'm just trying to create some value in this one that's more up front. See it? Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I'm going to get some white on my brush, but my brush is a little bit dirty, so it won't be just pure white. I'll just come right here. But we're not done because we're still putting the girl in. We still put the girl in. All right. And just to be fussy and awesome, I'm going to come with a little of my highlight and create a little definition of my knot. Just because I'm awesome on my front board. You can just see me just going there and making it more woody. Because I'm just a fiddly chick. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle chick. Oh, oh, fiddle, fiddle. Okay, first of all, love this piece right here. Probably could have just done the pier. <laughs> wow. Wow. Do you love my pair? I love my pair. It's just, hopefully you love your pair. It's not great that I love my pair. I paint all the time. I want you to love your pair. You've got to be feeling like, yes, I am amazing. Whoosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, photos have been taken. Miss Honey Bunny. All oh, right. she's gone. She's water. Gone. I'll get you some water there. How are you guys doing? They're doing great. This Do you is love really this painting? Awesome. I love this painting. I love this painting. Do you love this painting? Dear, 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 dear. I feel like we could do more stories like this. Because these are all just stories, right? And your canvas, you're just telling a story. You're just giving yourself a better view. Way back at the beginning when I was starting this, I was like trying to get you guys to think of these paintings as windows. Like I cannot afford a waterfront view right now. This is a view I'm definitely not in the income bracket for. Because, you know, YouTuber but, and artist. Let's layer that up on there, right? But, you know, I mean, it's the view I'd like to have. If I was a Cylon from Caprica, it would be my view, right? Because all Cylons have great views in Caprica. Does anybody know that? If you don't know what I'm talking about, that was a remake of Battlestar Galactica. They filmed it in Vancouver. So, pretty views that I yep. would say to John all the time. Why can't we just be Cylons on Caprica? Clearly, it's a good gig. They have the best view of the lake. Yeah, they got to keep the planet too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't blame them. It's a really good planet. <laughs> I mean, as a human, I'd be bummed, but I get the thinking. <laughs> so now we're going to finish the girl in there, huh? We're going to put the girl in. Do we like that? Oh, yeah. Does everybody want to put the girl in? Who's putting the girl in? Shout them out. I, I will do that then. I think that there's lots of people who are really, really... Hmm. I'm going to have to flip these over to do this. So what I'm going to try to do, because I don't have a traceable I'm using, and I'm going to have to freehand her in again. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that your reference and what I'm doing is somehow, like, close. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just going to do this. What is this? This is three centimeters, basically, from the bottom. I'm trying to just create some scale. So my scale and your scale is not so different from each other. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm doing. Oh, and then I'm going to have to freehand her in. Susan and Heather and Mona and, and Michelle. They had, lots of people are like, yes, 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 definitely put the girl in. Definitely put the girl in? Yes. All right, we're going to say she's about between 12 and 12 and a half centimeters. 
I've gone European today because mostly that's the measurement that's working on my ruler. <laughs> so about 12, I'm going to say. So that's about the scale and room I'm giving myself for my person. If you think of a human figure, you think there are six to eight heads. In other words, this distance, there should be about six to eight of these, depending mm -hmm. on if they're tall or short. Yep. So I'm going to get my little heads in. I'm going to put my head in. And I'm going to just sketch this very lightly. So I'm making this kind of an oval. It's not a perfect round shape. Even though I'm going to have a lot of hair blowing over to the side, right? And I'm going to come down and create a small and slender neck. I can always add to my neck, but this is based on my daughter. And she's a slight person. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm going to add a little ball joint here for the shoulder. And I'm going to come over here and add a little ball joint here for the other shoulder. That's going to help me when I'm putting this in. Right. I'm going to come in on a little waist here. Pop out for a little hip. This line is going to be really interesting because this arm is outreached. So I kind of curve this line back and then hit the hip in. And I'm going to come up. If you look at your elbow, right, or your kid's elbow, it kind of can help you figure out your length of arm. But what I'll tell you about an outreached arm mm -hmm. is that the elbow should hit whatever your waist is. If you were to put the arm down for it to be the right length, it will hit whatever your waist is. Kid, grown up, doesn't really matter. The hand's going to be a whole thing. I'll show you my hand trick. Yeah. And I don't put my star until I know where her hand is because I need to put my star above what she's reaching for. Oh, yeah. And I have her on her tiptoes, which is super helpful. <laughs> I'm going to put a little head shape here, a little round thing. I'm going to say, but. Okay. So I've got these legs and feet coming down. They're a little bit apart from each other curve in for the upper thigh. I'm going to put a little joint in for the knees. Wherever I decide my knees are, they're going to be, they're not going to be like one knees. They're symmetrical. Even though we as people are not symmetrical, unless you are drawing someone specifically that is not symmetrical, then definitely, definitely keep the symmetry. Curving in the little thigh here. And I'm going to give us a little calf. So the calf is going to come out thicker and taper down to the ankle. Thicker calf, taper down to the ankle. You know, what you're going to want to be thinking about is your person that you're putting in there. You know, this particular person is my, you know, 12-year-old. Is she 13? How old is she? <laughs> 12. 12-year-old 12 daughter. So she has different, you know, dimensions than, you know, I do by mm -hmm. a bit. I don't mind that. I'm going to put a circle here for the heel. Taper my leg into the heel. And then I come, sort of widen out the ball of the foot because she is on her tiptoes. She's down her toes, standing up, reaching, reaching. Now, why did I go all the way up to here? It's just because it's going to help me make sure that whatever figure I'm doing is is reminiscent of her. Look where am I at? I'm on waist, so I can bend my arm in now. I can bend my arm in Excuse me. once I have my waist determined. And then it's real easy to know, all right, I'm going to have my skirt blow this way and my hair blow that way. Now, me, the first thing I do, crazily enough, crazy person that I am, is I'm going to paint her in as a black silhouette. Great, just to get the basis down? Mm-hmm. And get her shadow, and then I'm going to start lightening her up with my skin tone. Right, yeah. And then when she's all in, I'll, I'll probably put a little, and I can actually even do it now. I'm going to put a shadow back of her. I'm going to need what, a small brush, though. I was going to say, what brush are you going to use there? Teeny tiny brush, at least a two bright. And I will get even smaller. And I will not do her hands without my smallest brush 
and very fresh fluid paint. It is easy for me to make her bigger. It is a challenge for me to make her smaller. So I will often come in and be more diminished in my lines initially. Ah, uh -huh, so that's why it's a, it, the lines may be a little thin to start with. Well, and she's 12. Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> like, you know, you, you know it's because it's easier to make to add than it is to to trim away, especially with that background. You know, because you've got that very complex, watery background. Now, kinda... if hair is your nemesis. Nemesi. Nemesi. In case you have one hair that's giving you trouble. Right. All right. So when we come up to where I was going to do my hand, see it's just tapering there. I'll come back with a small brush and possibly glasses to get that in. Because, <laughs> you know, hard to see. Mm -hmm. And even if you are quite young, right, it is still a good idea to use a loop or something to aid your vision when you're doing small and defined detail work. Magnifying lens, anything. Yeah, because it, it can put stress on your eyes. Well, and because your eyes, no matter how good they are, just don't see everything. And the more you see, the better you paint. Yep. Especially in detail. Yeah. So it's just a little trick you might not know. That every cross stretcher on the planet knows. Yeah. So I'm just painting her in with this black silhouette. I'm going to come back with my skin tone. But this is going to let me get a sense of her. Right. Just to block in. And I need it. Yeah. I, I personally, I don't know what you need, but I need a sense of my figures when they're in. Painting that in. <sighs> you could do heels. You could do a cat or dog. Mm. There's really no limitations to how you choose to populate or not populate your dock. I'm really proud of this painting. Now, if you wanted to, could you paint it in uh, white instead of black? Yep. Is it just sort of a preference on? Yeah. Totally you could. I mean, if you're doing student paints, you might want to. Hmm. Just getting the feet and heels in. I leave a little of my chalk. I can always take it off later, but sometimes it's a nice guide. Oh, yeah. Right? Hopefully I've got... This feels like stretching and tippy toes and reaching and all of that. So there's quite a few sort of reaching for the stars paintings. Mm -hmm. It is very nice to add one to the collection that is not really particularly derivative of everything else. Yep. <laughs> and this is sort of how I do feel about our stuff on YouTube. And about life. So even though I use my daughter a lot in my pieces and my son, sometimes I'm still talking about the stuff I'm going through. It's really interesting how it all ties together. Yeah. So a little slender arm here. Remembering to have the elbow bend at the waist. Hmm. And remember, I have a much simpler figure I did on the... Um, 200k uh oh yeah yeah the, the much simpler this got all complicated on me i'm going to put a little shadow certainly underneath the feet there can be a little light and then we're going to come back see yeah a little shadow a lot of times people will ask me like what can i do on my painting to improve it almost always it's add a shadow is the number one thing you guys forget. Can I have uh, my glasses from the computer? Yeah, sure. Hold on a second. So, letting her dry a bit, having her little minute, her little minute, her little moment. I'm definitely going to need these for hands and my smallest brush. And your smallest brush. 
and new fresh paint because I don't want no sticky. No, no, no sticky. So I'm going to get this brush completely just rolled in the paint. You can see I've just rolled the tip in there. I am going to put some glasses on so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And so here at the, and you, I don't know how much you can zoom in, babe, but go for the full zoom. Okay. So right here I have a wrist that I'm going to start. Right. And I like to, at the bend, make a paddle. So how I do that is I bring a little line out about the length of the palm of my hand. When I imagine the length of the palm of my hand is I'm going to curve this around and join this back into the bend. Can you guys see the paddle? Yeah. This is how I do hands. Everyone's like, how do you do hands? This is how I do hands. So I've joined this back into the paddle. Now I have my hand. What do I need to add? I need to add a thumb. So a thumb, right, has a little bit of a joint. It comes out and it's going to bend a bit. You see the thumb now? <laughs> That's a thumb, shorter than my other fingers. And then I remember the length of all my fingers. So the first four finger kind of sets the length for me of every finger after. I like to bend it at the joint, the main knuckle joint, so I can see it. Means the next finger has to be longer. <laughs> right? So I'm in, just a hair though, not like a significant amount, otherwise that gets a little crazy. Look at that, bend that at the joint. This one can be shorter again. And then you can either bend your pinky or straighten it out. Either one is fine. Sometimes it's easier to, to straighten a pinky out. I strengthen my wrist. Make sure my thumb feels like it could hold something. I might tip these fingers off, and by that I mean I might come back in with a little of my Indian yellow and my magenta, just skinning. That's okay, I don't really need that much of it left. Come right here and slim these back. See that? Yeah. I take the background color that they're in and I slim them back. Doesn't hurt you. It's worth doing. That's a hand. Hands are stressful. Don't feel like you're do. alone. Yeah. Huh? They can be very difficult to do. They can be very difficult to do. Very difficult. My pa my palate is gummed up again. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I know, guys. A lot of pain. A lot of pain. Okay, and I'm going to get close. down to what I need to do to finish this. I'm going to put out my Prussian blue. You could do phthalo blue and black. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put out my alizarin crimson. These are the same thing, except this is the slow drying. Mm -hmm. Slow drying acrylic. This is the regular heavy body. I'll put this out. I just want you guys to see that these just work with everything just fine. If you get some, friend gives you some. I don't know how you might come into some. Different different ways, right? A little white. Dun, 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 dun. Going to put out some ochre for her hair. Going to put out maybe a little burnt umber for a low light on her hair. Mm -hmm. And her skin. A smidge, a smooch, a scooch. A cad yellow. Going to enjoy peeling this off right now. He just pulled it off. I did. Because it's messing with my closing. Ah. So you might be asking why am I not concerned about the cad yellow on my skin? I don't have an allergy to the product. And actually, according to every single study and everything that I've been able to find so far, it doesn't just absorb through your skin. You have to get it inside your body and in loading doses like arsenic. So that's why. 
but don't eat paint because isn't that good for you? Right? Don't swim in asbestos. Don't eat paint. Stuff to just avoid doing. I'm going to put some glazing medium out. And one little smidge of phthalo blue, which I will, I'm going to miss this whole palette because goodness gracious, are we definitely going through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add a little fluid white to this. And I'm going to add a little fluid black to this. And I'm going to, while we're all here, place my twinkling star that our stargazer is reaching for. I'm going to take my ball tool. I'm going to come up above the hand and just out of reach drop a prominent star. That can drive for a minute. I'm going to get my small, my small number two. I'm going to make sure it's real dry. And first I'm going to load up some white on here. And I'm going to come around this star, dry brushing a light halo in the white. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Then to my phthalo blue, a little bit of my phthalo on there. Little halo here. Back into the white. This needs to be dark enough that when I, um, back into the blue, mm -hmm. when I put the white radials around it, they still show up. Ah. Okay. So I've got that. One thing I can do is I can put in her dress. Right? So I'm going to take, as my undertone on this, I'm going to take a little Prussian blue. And, oh, I'm going to have to add a smidge of white to it so you can even see it. Okay. I'm going to come and just give her a nice little summer dress. So it's just that kind of little scoop on the black. You could make any dress you want. Any dress you want. Now I'm going to come underneath here and blow that dress a bit. You see me blowing that dress? Oh, yeah. So it's just stroke and pull out. And you decide the length. You decide how far it blows. You can decide the hemline. All of it. Your dress. Your dress. I like to do a dark color underneath the white because as I come in with the white, it's going to help it really be bright. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. She's so pretty. Frame this and put this in Honey's room. All right. So now I'm going to put some of the blowing hair. I'm going to take some of my oppression over to my burnt umber. You could, you can use the uh, sienna if you don't have the umber. I'm going to smidge it with just a little bit of ochre, but this is still my dark hue. Can you see how dark that is? I'm going to come along here. And I'm going to start blowing out some hair to the side. Now there's lots of little hairs that will come out later. But the first thing is to get the body or shape of the hair in first. If you guys did the guy tang with me, you were like ready for this. You know, rainbow the hair, whatever you want with the hair. I'm just coming along the edge and just making sure that there's this delicate, even though I'm coming with the highlights, it's all going to be defined in the highlights. 
And what am I protecting? I'm protecting this mountain passage here. I don't want to erase that, do I? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking about this pole. See, because I lost my pole there, and I didn't like that the first time. So this time I'm being super careful. Be aware. Think of your passages. So her hair is blocked in. Now I've got to start painting in her skin tone. Her skin tone for me is going to be yellow ochre, a little alizarin crimson. I may even get a palette knife out so that I can mix up a significant amount of this. So I'm mixing, mixing, mixing. Now, Tara was asking, why does a dark underpainting help with certain lighter colors seem more, more? Because uh, the paint's sort of transparent and stuff shines through. Ah, so that adds, you know, some layers of warmth and Yeah, depth. just trying to make a nice amount of this. Needs a little more yellow to it. This is a base skin tone. Again, I have whole quests on uh, skin tone. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's probably darker than I need, but we'll put this to the side. A little rosy color. You can see it kind of coming together, yeah? I'll wipe this out. And then I'm going to put a little more white out. And that should help me get through all her skin tones fairly easily. Mm -hmm. Having a little bit mixed up, if you're trying to make these micro mixes the whole way through, it's just, oh, it just becomes a whole big fiddly drama. I'm going to paint the hardest part first. Okay. Feet and hands. Feet, oh, yeah. Feet so and that's going to be my little brush again. Zoom in on the hands. Yeah, zoom in on these hands. All right, so I'm going to come in with that first sort of mid-tone I made. All right, and I'm going to come here very carefully, gently, gently on the inside. Paint these little hands. reaching for the stars. A mm -hmm. little bit of paint. This is the hardest part, which is why I'm so glad that you can just, why we did it so you could just be like, just peer. <laughs> 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 just peer. Now, what's really interesting, I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm painting inside the black, creating a very fine outline. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Why are you doing that? Because it creates a sense of space and just subtle contrast, doesn't it? It lets you feel like that hand is even more delicate than it is. Yeah. It's something you'll see um, uh, a lot of uh, multimedia artists do. And I think it's a good thing. I'm going to add a little pink, just a smidge to the fingers. a little bit, dusting that hand, blushing the hand. See, I got the darker color with the alizarin and I'm just blushing the hand. Mm -hmm. We're going to blush these feet a bit too. So I'm going to put a little more of my alizarin in here, get my glazing medium if I need it. And I might even add a smidge of Prussian. Takes it almost to a purple. This purple is going to make this feel like these feet aren't in shadow. You go down there to the feet. So I'm going to come up. Balls of the feet. See the heel. Small brush. It's okay to take your time. It's okay to have a painting take a minute. It's okay to pause and rewind me. <laughs> it's all okay. Well, this is a little longer one today, but you yeah. know, we're, we're covering a lot of really good information on it. It is a long one. Three hoot all the way. Yeah. Much more involved than we normally get to do on YouTube.
You know, usually when you get an evolved piece like this, you're you're at a workshop somewhere. Yeah. But that's okay. Because we can have our YouTube workshop. <laughs> or you can pause, rewind, fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> come back later. Come back later, have all kinds of feels. I'm going to get some of my alizarin pink here in the skin tone. And I like to, just at the top of the heel, pink that up. Maybe down the inside. You see that? Oh, yeah. Just a nice touch. You'll enjoy looking at that later when it's on your wall. Just like we pinked up the hand. Just a bit. Foot's in shadow, pinked up the hand. That's okay. Let's get a little oppression on there. Maybe a little glaze. We can just even shadow at the bottom of the... Isn't that nice? Yeah. All right. Getting back into my two. Uh, let's, let's paint this girl up. So this shadow that I've made with the uh, Prussian and the skin tone, mm -hmm. I like that, and I want to definitely have that here at the back as an undertone. See that? Yeah. It's going to be an undertone. It's not going to be all that's going on, but I like that. So I'm going to keep it, and we're definitely, definitely going to have a little shadow at the legs and a little shadow at the legs. I'm going to go back up to the upper body in a second. Okay, you ready, John? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go back up here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll stay up here. That's the last like jump around I gotta do. So I'll stay up here for a minute. Okay. So I'm gonna get my base skin tone and I'm gonna mix it into my pink a bit. And I'm gonna paint in very carefully. Dry brush over this. You're sort of layering that in there. Yeah, I'm just gently dusting this over. Some of the black is showing through. That's okay. It's nighttime. Now, so we can let her whole aspect be cooled down. Now, you're using the direction of your brush very intentionally here, I see. Yeah, so like if I'm in a, sh if I'm in a shoulder, I'm going to round that brush stroke out. At the back, I'm going to curve it up. And I also noticed that you're not... You're, you're, you're not working the areas very much. No, no, I'm being very light. I'm going to, like, dust over the shadow very lightly. So I noticed but that's I just want it to still be there a little bit, right? Yeah, you want to talk about overworking that a little so that... So, oh, for overworking? Yeah. So I think the way to avoid overworking is that you have to know when your paint is gummy and not responsive. So paint is either wet into wet and you're working it into that where you're dry brushing over it, but there's this weird mid-state where it's gummy and it lifts back up. And I think years of experience has taught me to avoid spots that will be gummy. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. So I'm just looking like, you know, like, and you can always just touch, right? If it's just a little bit sticky or if you're painting and it's lifting up, it's gummy. And then on top of that, some paint companies are very, very responsible. I'm going to add a little Indian yellow over here to warm this up. And on the inside of her arm, I'm going to warm that skin tone up. Can you see that? Yeah. Inside the neck and along here. And then maybe again on the shoulder and down the outside of this arm. Let's get into the pink. Get pink, pink. All right, we're pinking it up into our base skin tone. We're, you know, rosying that up, giving her circulation. And pulling that here. Just making sure she just feels alive. 
alive. Mm -hmm. Now I wiped off and I want to get some just kind of like alizarin on my brush. And then maybe a little glaze. Still up on her back? Yeah, I'm still up on her okay. back. I'm going to come here on the elbow and pink up the elbow a bit. Too much pink. Wipe off. <laughs> but I wasn't getting enough in the mix. See right there? That's yeah. what I'm looking for. A little pinked up on the elbow. Right here on the back, I'm going to pink it up. Back here a little bit again. Maybe the neck. Down the arm. Definitely elbow. And I might come in, maybe I do it with a prussian, but just something. Or I come in and just create a little shadow right there. I might create a little shadow right here. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just spending some time putting Oh, this is looking great. The shadow. Maybe give her a little... Right, you see that? Yeah. And just a little bit right here. Because, you know, hair. A little bit of her back. Do I need to come in and brighten up that skin tone? Maybe. Some much lighter. There we go. Okay to just spend some time with the stuff. Wipe off if you need to. Dry brush over. It's just soft dusting, isn't it? Yeah. Until I find my space where I'm real happy. Because I want her to feel nighttime, but I want her to feel as fair as she is. So let's come do the legs. And again, let's get our let's take our base mix into our pink a bit. Let's come down our legs. Now you notice that I'm brushing across to kind of show that barrel shape of a leg. Giving that little that little there. shape there. Yeah, just sort of defining that out. Oh, I lost my shadow. I got distracted, <laughs> and I just painted out my shadow, which just means I got to put it back in. So how would you do that? Well, I'll do it well, on both legs. Gonna, I guess we're going to see it, huh? <laughs> yeah, I got to do it. I'll do it on both legs so that they're unified. But that happens. Sometimes I put something down, and I think I'm going to keep it, and then I get so zoned into what I'm painting mm -hmm. that I lose what I was doing. That got a little overdone there. I'm going to get my clean water. And I'm going to come back. Oh, yeah. And erase. Oh, wow. If the paint is still wet and the area underneath is dry, I can do this. You lift the paint up. Yep. It's a lot easier than putting back all that wood. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, which I don't want to do. So, erased. Putting skin tone back on. There we go. Just making sure I've got a nice coat of paint here. Let's shadow up the legs. So I'm going to get a little of the red and just a smidge of Prussian on my thing. And then it's like, you see that right there? I'm going to just dust right under here. So it's a little shadow. Yeah. And then we definitely need one on the inside leg here. Think? Mm hmm So that's really nice. Now I'm going to definitely take a little of this crimson into this mix. Too much crimson into the mix. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm just trying to find my space. I'm going to add a little white to it. There we go.
Add some layers there. Yeah, always got to layer, layer, layer. A little dusting of maybe some color. Oh, yeah. Just dusting with this pink. You can just see me going back and forth real light, can't you? Mm -hmm. Back, forth, back, forth. Dusting down. Now, while I'm here, finding my detail brush again. There she is. I'm going to come and do a couple things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of any of the chalk that I don't want on these legs. The next mm. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of my fluid black and on the inside here I'm going to outline off the back of the heel mm -hmm. and down the inside. Just a little contrast shadow. Mm -hmm. Just to help back of the heel. It's looking pretty nice. Yeah. Got a small one up here on this body. We kind of left it when we did the arm here, but we can continue to find that. And then maybe down the inside here. Pretty nice stuff. And then I just want this smooth, so I'm going to come get some of this with some fluidity and make sure. But this is a nice line. All right. When I'm happy with that, whew, we're going to brush in the dress. Are we ready to do that? Small, sure. scruffy number four bright. I'm going to rinse it out, make sure I don't have pigment in it. And I'm going to get my white. And I'm going to let there be just a smidge, maybe a lizard and the blue in it. See, that's kind of like a grayed out purple. Yeah. First layer. Dry brushing this outside. Just coming here. Here we go. Here we go. Are you guys just into this? Mm -hmm. So proud of this it's painting. It's coming man. together so nicely. Just loving this. There, everyone's everyone's wondering how long it will take them to paint because it's like, well, if it took you this long, how long will it take me? And there's there's ranges <laughs> from days to months <laughs> in thoughts. But I think that a lot of people are going to try this. So I hope really nice. you do. I hope you guys go for it. I think I'm going to grab my number two bright. I hope you guys go for it. I hope you guys believe that you can do it. I hope you guys totally, oh man, she's looking so good. By the mm -hmm. time I get this hair in and I sparkle that star, this is the jam. Oh yeah. It's going to be like, you know, maybe a little cad yellow here into the white. See, I'm just kind of building that up. And you come here. Making these little dashes. See those? Yeah. This is sort of like an impasto painting. And it's one of the places that I think heavy body paint is awesome. Because I can do this. Are we feeling her mm -hmm. now a little bit? Too much yellow, so I'll come back into my white. And that that under undertone really adds a lot of depth to it. It does, man. It just makes a difference. Now I'm really loading up my white here. And see this? Oh yeah. Uh oh. 
<laughs> We're still here, right? Yeah. I hear the sirens. <laughs> no, no. The hurricane, uh, you know, just so you guys know, the hurricane isn't making landfall for, uh, for it, it, primary landfall is pr- way south of us. And then when it comes back around a second time, it'll be coming up towards Houston. But we're very safe. We've got a, we're well situated here. High ground, lots of All the stuff. Lots of uh, preparation. So Lots of prep. Lots of preparation. I'm going to take my charcoal pencil while this is all having a little dry. So Patty was curious if and she I'm could. I'm going to draw my little lines in. Patty's curious. Could she put some glitter on her heavy body paint to make that dress sparkle? You can absolutely do that. You can also use an interference color. Totally works really well. Lots, 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 lots that you can do. So definitely, yeah, I feel like you can um, take like a, a gloss beam and varnish or gel or whatever and kind of put that on top of the dress and then very carefully sprinkle the glitter and then you can seal it down. Um, we've done glitter painting on the channel. Yeah. Pretty much, yes. You can glitter paint with acrylic paint. I'm taking my detail brush and rolling it in my fluid. I think I've got a center here that's still good. <laughs> Not gummy. I chalked in my radials because, as I've talked about a bunch, um, sometimes my steady hand is not as steady as it needs to be. But I can draw steadier than I can paint for some insane reason. And so... Just want to make sure that I get these first sparkles in. Uh-oh. Wow! What's that? It went weird. <laughs> so you can show everyone that, who was it was saying, uh, uh, Amanda was saying that when you make mistakes, it makes it makes her feel better because that way you know, she knows it's okay for her to make mistakes. Oh, dude, totally okay for you to make mistakes. And then she just, bing, puts it back in there. I grew up artist. Yeah. And I can promise you growing up in a working art studio... And then being a working artist, everybody make a mistake. Mm-hmm. If you uh, ever go to one of the open artist lofts, when they're not on show day, when they're just working, there's always somebody cussing. <laughs> yep. It's just the sound of art being made. <laughs> so I'm making these shorter radials with these longer radials to give this star an extra sparkle. Extra sparkle. Extra sparkles are important. Whoop. Gosh darn it, I lost my detail brush. <laughs> I'll be getting it in a minute. So first I'm going to take a little of my uh, yellow ochre. And maybe I might smidge it a bit with my Prussian just to knock it back. And I might even add some of my fluid paint to it. Improve the fluidity. So here's the range I'm trying to get. Let's come into our hair and start painting some stuff afoot. So one of the things that I'm going to want to do is create, oh my gosh, thank you, babe. Create a sense of low light and high light. And if you'll notice, I'm being very delicate with this brush stroke. It's like touch, touch, touch. I'm going to leave a lot of shadow here. So I might just lightly dust over it so it feels blonde, but I really need a lot of shadow here. Because this is the back of the head, and there would be hair in shadow. I'm also going to see me go wiggle in and out. So I'm going to create kind of like a sense of curls and wefts of hair. Yeah. before I ever get my detail brush out. And then a little bit golder right here. So darkest right there. Now, I'm gonna have to, this got gummy on me, so I'm gonna have to pull out my ochre. More paint. Yeah, but very little put up my yellow again and put up my fluid white to finish this bad boy out. Don't need a lot because we're at the end of this. Just at the end of the hair. We're at the end of you the whole painting. You've actually already signed it. 
I've already signed it. So we're literally at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little fluid white into my ochre. I'm going to get this just nicely defined on here. And I'm going to start making these little defining little hairy brush strokes. Some of them will go away from the body of the hair, right? Yeah. Rinsing out, rinsing out, rinsing out. Some nice ochre and white. Just maybe put these little suckers back on. Gotta see <laughs> the fiddly bits. If you can't see the fiddly bits, how can you create it? All right. I'm going to just be working my white and fluid and ochre. Mm -hmm. Like you do. Add little highlights there, here and there. Creating depth and dimension to the hair. In motion. Do you feel the motion of the hair? Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to add a little, this is such a pop, a little of the cad yellow and the white. Not a lot. Otherwise, it'll be yellow hair. Yeah. But a little bit is lovely. A lot of white. I'm going to get my number two brush again. I'm going to come into my ochre. I'm going to just make sure There we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. She is, is, was, and will always be the apple of my eye. Mm hmm. Little honey bunny. Little honey bunny. There we go. So her, too. Like, if you know her, you know it's her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh dude is this fantastic or what and see here look i'll, I'll uh you know you, I'll, I'll give them a real quick okay. give a little there's a little oh, there's a little Since screen for them oh yeah so they can see that there they were also asking for like a tour on uh like up close like on the robot cam a tour around the canvas oh i think we can do that can we do that yeah we can come up here and show you around you know just an up close tour of everything See how the stars came out. Really see how that, whoop. See all the little cattails or the or pompous grass is what you call them there. Yeah. So yeah, you can see that really turned out nice. And just hold it there. So you guys go. Can you believe we did this? When I painted this, I said to John, there's just no way to teach this on YouTube. This is entirely too involved of a painting. And then I was like, it's space week. Maybe some people will watch it. And you did. To everyone who paints this, I applaud you. I had, you know I had fun today. Oh, yeah. Doing this. I felt like 
the awesome sauce painting it. I feel amazing to teach it. I'm so grateful to be able to teach a painting like this to you. We're going to keep doing these incredible, lush, it, just insane, beautiful color stories. Um, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Stay store safe in the storms of your life. Mm -hmm. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.